Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is a story about what if Naruto learns 100 jutsu before Chunin exam Sasuke Fem. Before I start, please support for more amazing content and do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This is written by AA Mythology and link in the description and support writer. Let's start the video. Chapter 1. Somewhere I Belong, aka Thousand Hands, Naruto AU. Naruto teams up with Fem Sasuke, known as Ichihabawako. This story won't have pairings until the involved characters are well into their teens. Even if they share a bed, it's innocent, they're eight. Inspired by Ginja Ninja's history repeats itself, with his permission, he's here, Fnet. This is also my second try at a Mokuten, Wood style, Naruto story. Yeah, Mokuten Naruto is a cliche blah blah, yada yada. I know. First two chapters beta ed by Ginja Ninja. Naruto was born to his canon parents, but one of them is descended from Hashirama, you'll see how later. Two children by a lake, a moment of understanding. Such a thing can change the world. Naruto made eye contact with his classmate, the one he thought was named Buwako. In her eyes, he could see the same pain he felt all the time, loneliness. Before he could think, his lips moved and he said, wanna spar. It was too late for take backs. Buwako looked at him with her completely black eyes for a moment, then nodded. Naruto followed the girl to a training ground and the two of them stood still for a minute, sizing up one another. So how do we do this? I'm Yuzumaki Naruto by the way, Naruto said, starting to jump in place. Buwako didn't speak for a moment, but she simply said, Ichiha Buwako. To Jutsu only. Naruto nodded and got into a stance. He had been looking at observing. That's what Aruka called it the other academy students in Tijutsu practice for a while to copy them, and with some help from Aruka, had gotten somewhat good. Fortunately, the man had also helped him learn how to read and write, because the caretakers had been too afraid of Naruto to get close enough to him to teach him. What's the problem, Naruto? Aruka said, making Naruto jump in place. The boy had stayed in the classroom to try and study during lunchtime, but. It's too hard, Hiruka sensei I don't get it. All those kanji and and, Naruto said, ready to cry. Wait, Hiruka said, realizing the problem immediately, didn't they teach you how to read at the orphanage? Naruto, expecting his sensei to mock him, lifted his head slowly. He said, they didn't. Hiruka looked furious after hearing that, but he didn't mock Naruto. He took the time to teach Naruto how to read and even called him a very fast learner. It took Naruto two to three months to be called adequate by Aruka and another to be above average at reading. Another half year later, Naruto's scores ended up slightly higher than the class's highest scoring student in tests, though he had already forgotten the girl's name. The academia only scores were as follows. Naruto. History. 100 100 Biology Anatomy. 100 100 Math. 97 100 Sciences. 99 100 Tactics. 92 100 Traps. 9100s, Ninjutsu Theory. 100 100s, Unknown Girl. History. 100 100s, Biology Anatomy. 9100s, Math. 95 100s, Sciences. 93 100s, Tactics. 99 100s, Traps. 100 100s, Ninjutsu Theory. 100 100s. He now remembered that Wako was the girl who always got the highest overall scores. He also remembered her taking her loss calmly she had pouted for a bit, unlike Sakura. Sensei, this can't be right, the pink-haired girl he couldn't remember the name of said, why did you score my test lower than that bums? Naruto froze in place and looked at Aruka, only to see his sensei's face was still smiling, but it was scaring him for some reason. Sakura, the man said gently, Naruto earned his marks. You keep putting others down when they show better performance than you instead of improving yourself, this is not an attitude worthy of a competent future ninja. The girl looked at Aruka, then at Naruto, then ran outside, crying. Fake tears. Either way, Naruto didn't remember anyone else defending him like that, except maybe for Matoko-san, and she had stopped, probably because Naruto couldn't stand her. When Sakura's parents had come to complain and threatened to pull her out of the academy, Aruka hadn't backed off. He had supposedly had some choice words about there and Sakura's attitude. Naruto didn't know what the man had said then, but Sakura had become more serious in the practical subjects, and Aruka would help her get better, just like he would for Naruto. Your stance is all over the place, Naruto, Aruka said, looking the boy over carefully, where did you learn it? Naruto said, I've been watching the others and copying them. Is it that bad? Rubbing the back of his head. He had also been fighting off bullies for a long time in the orphanage, but that was another story. Aruka rubbed the back of his head too and said, well, it's good for a beginner. The very good thing is that it shows you can learn quickly. Then, the older male corrected Naruto's form. It took many hours of trying again and again before Naruto was tired. 
After that, Iruka treated Naruto to ramen at the Ichiraku stand. The blonde boy was busy slurping up the noodles in his bowl when Iruka cleared his throat. The man said, hey Naruto. Naruto said, whack is Ikaraka sensei Still eating. Do first and swallow, then speak, Naruto, Iruka said, scolding him gently. So sorry, Iruka sensei Naruto said, leaving the poor bowl of ramen alone for now. What is it? He said then. How would you feel if Sakura were to join our training sessions? Iruka said. What? But Iruka sensei Sakura is is Naruto said, lost for words, mostly because any word he could think of at the moment would make Iruka scold him. She's a fellow classmate who wants to improve. Don't forget that you're not my only student, Naruto, Iruka said, smiling gently at him. That smile made Naruto not want to disappoint him. The boy said, yeah, I guess, sensei, sulking a bit. Iruka ruffled his hair and said, oh, don't be like that, Naruto. You might even like Sakura if you get to know her better. Yeah, right, Naruto murmured, still not over how Sakura tended to treat him. Thus give it a chance, all right, Naruto. Iruka said, almost pleading, and Naruto just couldn't say no. Okay sensei, Naruto said, not sulking anymore, I'll try. That's all I ask, Iruka said and ruffled Naruto's spiky hair again. Either way, Naruto had a spar to begin. He saw that Iwako had been waiting for him without complaining, and that made him respect her a little more. The two of them had never sparred in the past, boys and girls fought separately in the early academy, so they had never done what they were going to that day. Naruto put up a seal of confrontation, and Bawako reluctantly did the same thing. They tensed, and the second a bird passed just over a pond, the two of them moved towards each other. Naruto noticed that Bawako moved much faster than he could, but he shrugged off the knowledge and concentrated on the fight. Bawako kicked him in the gut, making his breath catch. Then, Bawako tried to kick Naruto in the chin, but he stepped to the side quickly, making her mostly miss, barely grazing him. So, his pain toll toll whatever, saved him from that follow-up. Naruto elbowed her in the kicking leg immediately, hopefully slowing her down. He had learned his lesson of holding back with girls after the Ami and Maifa incident. The Wako backed off quickly, hobbling, she also seemed more surprised than hurt. She said, your reflexes are as quick as mine, sounding surprised. This time, Naruto was the one who didn't speak much in fact, he didn't speak at all, he simply shrugged. He tried to keep the fact that he was a bit out of breath quiet. The two of them, on another unspoken signal, clashed again, this time, Bawako's much greater flexibility and clan training won out, and she pinned Naruto down. Unfortunately for her, she hadn't perfected the hold. And Naruto was much, much stronger than he looked, so he got out, though he was visibly out of breath after that easier tion. Naruto looked at his opponent and decided to put his experience to use. After all, Bawako had to fight against girls who were more worried about getting a boyfriend usually their arrogant prick of a senpai, Hai Uganiji, with Mito, Ugg, her only challenge. Sakura was strong too, but she usually held back against Bawako for some reason. On the other hand, Naruto had had to outmaneuver Kiba in the past, outsmart Shino, and block Jouji's powerful blows. Not to forget showing patience to that lazy shit, Shikamaru. Seriously, his new habit of giving up every time he was supposed to face Naruto really annoyed him. Mizuki, the assistant teacher, had had it out for him for a while, that was why Naruto usually had to fight the strongest students, but Mizuki regretted it when Naruto ended up stronger than them in barely more than a year. He could trick Shino and avoid Shino's own tricks most of the time, move almost as fast as Kiba, with more Gaili Tai, and beat Chaoji in a straight contest of strength, though he played to their weaknesses when he could. He ran at Wako, but not straight on, then used his incredible Gaili Tai to turn on Arayo and attack her from behind. He punched her as she was turning, too stunned to react immediately, and got her in the cheek with incredible power, making her actually bleed and throwing her away from him. Bawako got up shakily and wiped her injured cheek of blood. Naruto blurted out and are you alright, Bawako. But she ignored him. She glared, full of hatred, at first, that worried him, but Naruto soon realized that she was seeing someone else in his place, he knew what being hated was like, so he knew that she was looking through him, and not to ignore him. She hated someone else with all her heart. The Wako let out a cry filled with rage and attacked him again, this time, she wasn't as smart in her fighting, so Naruto still had a chance. On the other hand, his stamina was running out and the Wako was still going strong, he now knew that she had higher reserves, but fortunately, that didn't see Sarai Lai mean she could last longer. Their last exchange ended with Naruto being kicked in the chest with incredible strength, he absently noted that this time, she had used her left foot. Either she was holding back before, or her left is much stronger he thought while flying through the air, coughing out saliva, hopefully without blood. This time, she looked a bit worried, but when he got up, injuries no longer a problem, she said, what are you made of? Looking at him with a mixture of shock and excitement. 
Naruto dusted himself off, ignoring his worry that she would call him a freak in favor of focusing. He said, I've always healed quickly. Now, let's go. Thanks to Naruto having gotten his second wind, their next exchange ended up with Bawako getting a punch in the gut, then a kick in the chest when she bent down, being thrown away. She looked like a vengeful goddess then, eyes literally red, pain and fury twisting her features. It was all or nothing then. This last exchange would decide the fight. This time, Bawako went for a punch in the face. She avoided Naruto's counter perfectly, with an ease that seemed to surprise even her, which made her punch be weaker than it should be. Still, Naruto was seriously tired and hurt already, so his headbutt in the chest was weaker than he had expected, much weaker. Still, the previous gut and chest hits must have done their job, because Bawako dropped at the same time Naruto did, and their fists met on the way down. There are three known methods to increase one's natural talent for an element, for, if one counts the awakening of an already existent elemental bloodline. One is through, usually illegal, experimentation, such as injecting oneself with an elemental bloodline one does not possess the potential for. The second one is sealing a biju with an elemental affinity or bloodline within oneself, though the compatibility with that biju is lower when the affinities are different. The other is when, in a process little is understood about, two people connect with each other during pitched combat, even if they are enemies, or even a very intense spar, and happen to possess the correct combination of elements. Even fewer know that this is a product of ninshu. It took a few minutes for them to catch their breaths, but when they did, Naruto said, that was incredible. I never knew you could fight like that. What's up with the red eyes by the way? You said it, Bawako said, I wish I had healing and stamina regeneration like yours, though. Don't sell yourself short, Naruto said, I could tell that your reserves of stamina are much higher than mine, without the second wind I got, I'd have lost much earlier. Right, Bawako said, wait, red eyes. Then, she looked at the small lake and whooped in joy, saying Sharingan repeatedly and fell backwards, unconscious. Naruto caught her quickly, panicking. He said, Bawako. Bawako. Come on it's not funny. He checked her pulse, but it felt normal to him. He carried her carefully to not be discovered, went up to one of the houses in the Ichiha district, trusting his gut, and, of course, it looked lived in. He put her in a bed and went to her kitchen to make some tea. He had to decide if he would take her to the hospital, and it was a hard decision. He would immediately be blamed for any injuries she had, his fault or not. Still, he steeled himself. It probably was actually his fault, he also wouldn't risk Bawako's health. He felt calm after deciding that, but he heard something he didn't expect. Movement from Bawako's room. He knocked at the door, saying, Bawako. Are you awake? Naruto couldn't hear what exactly she muttered, but she soon stumbled out of said room, looking like a zombie, like in the manga he sometimes read in the orphanage. Uzo, oh, it's you, Bawako said, slurring a bit. What's wrong? Are you sick? Naruto asked, worried again. He didn't dare tell her that she sounded and looked like a drunk. What no, it's just chakra exhaustion, but never mind that. How did you find my house? Bawako said, a strange look on her face. I'm not sure, Naruto said, I trusted my gut, the place felt more alive, somehow. Bawako frowned a bit. She said, that doesn't make sense wait. Are you a tracker, or maybe a sensor? What's that? Naruto asked, curious. He had heard the words before, but didn't know what they meant. Never mind is that tea? Bawako said. Yeah. I'm sorry I took over your kitchen, but I couldn't sit and do nothing. How do you drink your tea? Naruto said. I drink it with no sugar and no cream or milk I don't like sweet things, Bawako replied. Naruto couldn't believe that. He said, even fruits. Before he could stop himself. I can tolerate fruits, especially non-sweet ones like tomatoes okay, that's a lie, I love tomatoes, Bawako said, looking more alive. Naruto smiled. He said, I like all fruits, including tomatoes. Except lemons. Useless little dot I like vegetables too. I wish I had a place to grow them. Why don't you grow them here, in the Achiha district? Bawako offered. Naruto could see that she was surprised by her own words, but she didn't take them back. He eventually said, I think I'll do that. Thanks. Bawako went up to a mirror and simply looked at her own face. What are you doing? Naruto asked after a while, seeing that she was absorbed in her reflection. Checking my eyes. Do you know what the Sharingan is? Bawako said. Eh, not really. But if it takes chakra, should you be using it right after chakra exhaustion? Naruto said, a bit worried. The wacko turned to him, her eyes once again red. Now that he was able to examine them, he could see a comma mark in each of them, at least until they turned black. You're right of course, what was I thinking? The wacko said angrily, hopefully not angry at Naruto. Is this Sharingan a bloodline limit? Naruto asked, curious. Yes, the wacko said, swaying in place again. Naruto quickly said, you should go to the hospital for your chakra exhaustion. 
you might have cuts and bruises too, getting ready to catch her if she fell. HMPH, the wacko said, only if you go too. Naruto looked down and explained that the doctors and medic nins in the hospital didn't like him. Will they refuse to treat you? The wacko asked, her expression neutral. Only if my problem isn't very serious, Naruto replied, I also don't want to make my re-reputation even worse, so please don't tell anyone we sparred like that. If we go to the hospital at the same time, people might guess what happened. The wacko nodded. She said I'll lie and say that I got an older student as a sparring partner. Is that enough? Yeah, thanks, Naruto said, relieved. For the time being, you can sleep on the couch, the wacko said, strangely calmly. Hey? Are you sure? Naruto said, taken aback. The wacko nodded. She said, unless you prefer the orphanage, slyly. Oh, gods no, Naruto said, disgusted at the idea. Well the new orphanage wasn't anywhere near as hostile as the previous and rarely had kids attack him or disappear, it was still terrible, not to mention the lower amounts of food. It was a temporary arrangement and back to the orphanage, though. Right. Naruto smiled to himself bitterly. The wacko had just come back from the hospital. She had been given a pill for her chakra exhaustion and prescribed a cream for her bruises. The doctor tried to question her on how she had gotten the injuries, but her cold attitude had helped her for the thousandth time. When she got back, she found Naruto on the couch, asleep. However, he was twisting around as if he were having a nightmare and sweating terribly. That can't be healthy in this weather Bawako thought. So, she went to get a blanket. Unfortunately, as she was covering him, Naruto latched onto her in his sleep and wouldn't let go. I have to get away without waking him up Bawako thought, well, at least he's not shaking anymore. After a few attempts, the girl resigned herself to her fate and tried to fall asleep. She didn't realize she had until she woke up. Fortunately, she had just enough time when she woke up to stop hugging Naruto. Ugh where am I? Naruto said, realizing something was off, only to meet a black-eyed glare from up close. Did you sleep comfortably? The wacko asked sweetly. Too sweetly. Naruto soon realized that he had his arms wrapped around something or someone. The wacko. Shit. Naruto unwrapped his arms from the girl and threw himself off the couch, hitting his head on something. Bright lights flashed in his sight. Ouch. What happened? Naruto thought, blacking out for a second. I said I'm sorry, Naruto said, what more do you want? Idiot, the wacko said, brow twitching. She had slept better than she had since well, for the past month, and didn't mind all that much, but she wouldn't let Naruto know, nor let him off the hook. Naruto sighed, but he didn't say any more. Smart boy. The coming night, Naruto crashed on the couch again, and Bawako ended up lying next to him again. Don't you dare tell anyone. Idiot. Soon enough, Bawako ended up telling Naruto to use her bed, and that was the story of how Naruto left the orphanage. The second spar Naruto and Bawako had was a week or so later. Bawako had been so sure of her victory thanks to her Sharingan that she lost easily. She learned not to underestimate Naruto, the hard way. And that was how the two of them became rivals, though not the hostile kind. She wanted her rival to be strong, which was why she taught him the basic Earank Academy Jutsu early, telling him that he should try to learn them so well that he could do them without hand seals. The two of them didn't have anything more advanced, other than the Wacko's Gakaku, Great Fireball, but they wanted to correct that. The Wacko had been trying to find the Achiha library for ages, but even now she had the Sharingan, it wasn't so easy. She didn't expect what Naruto suggested next instead of learning from scrolls. Let's buy on shinobi who are training, Naruto said, smiling wide and with teeth, which was a rare thing. What if they catch us? The Wacko said, not really against the idea. Your Sharingan can't see really far, right? Naruto said, still grinning, my hiding skills are great, too, so let's buy on adult ninjas. I can't copy Jutsu very well yet, the wacko said, annoyed at the fact that her Sharingan only had one Tomo, comma mark, in each eye. I'll do it, Naruto said, my memory is great I can memorize the hand seals perfectly. The wacko sighed. She said, just be careful, don't spy on Jounin, and don't be your usual reckless elf. Naruto crouched down, and the wacko could swear she saw a dark cloud hovering above his head. He kept saying Bawako thinks I'm reckless, depressed, drawing circles on the floor. Bawako rolled her eyes upwards Naruto was being an idiot again. Naruto learned, after a bit of careful spying on Chunin sparring and training grounds, how to use the water clone jutsu. To be exact, he saw it used once and managed to use it right in less than an hour of trying it. The hand seals were dragon, ram and tiger. Bawako was looking at Naruto with her mouth open. She said, Naruto have you had training in water ninjutsu? Naruto shook his head. He said, no. I haven't learned any of the elements at all. The wacko said, I think you might be a sensor even with a water affinity, it's unlikely you would have learned an elemental ninjutsu with so few hand seals without some training, unless you knew how the chakra had to be used for that jutsu. 
Burrito said, you've talked about sensors before. What does that mean? Does it mean that I can feel chakra somehow? We haven't learned that in the academy. The wacko nodded and launched into a lecture on the subject, complete with a lecturing pose. So, how do I use that skill? Naruto asked. Well I don't know, the wacko said, blushing. What do you mean you don't know? Naruto said, almost shouting. Give me a break, Naruto it's not like I know everything. Even if I do know a lot more than you do, the wacko said, smirking. Naruto sulked for a bit after hearing that, making the wacko wait, had she just. The wacko, Naruto said slyly, did you snort just now? The wacko was blushing again. She said, now you're hearing things, too. The wacko chan, Naruto said in a sing-song voice, don't be like that. You can't fool me, I heard you loud and clear, smirking. Whatever. Idiot, the wacko said, her expression once again unreadable. Naruto murmured that she sounded just like a tsundere. What did you say? The wacko demanded, raising a fist. Yup, definitely a tsundere. What are you smiling at? The wacko asked a few moments later. It's nothing, Naruto said, still smiling wide. So, Naruto do you have a dream? Or maybe an ambition? I'm curious, the wacko said a few seconds later, changing the subject, looking at Naruto without smiling, not that she ever did. Naruto stopped smiling and thought the question over. He then said, I don't know yet. I guess that I want to be accepted by the village, or at least find another place that will accept me. I believe that becoming a legendary ninja will help me in that, I definitely can't be accepted if I'm just a nobody. Besides, with the village so unfriendly, it's better if I am strong. What about you? The wacko laughed without humor. She said, I walked right into this one, didn't I? I have this dream no, it's more an ambition. I will kill that man and avenge my family. Naruto decided to keep to himself the fact that she didn't sound all that assured of her chances against whoever she hated. He said, who is that man? Almost whispering. The wacko remained silent for a bit, seemingly thinking. Then, she said, I might as well tell you. The man I hate with all my heart is the one who murdered the rest of my clan, who slaughtered them, my older brother, Ichiha Itachi. Naruto didn't know what to say to that. No, that was a lie he definitely had something to say. He vowed, I'll help you get stronger to kill your target and fulfill your ambition. You'll see, I'll be the best rival you've ever had. The wacko blinked, a hint of water in her eyes. She said, oh Naruto, and hugged him briefly, a rare thing, other than what she would do in her sleep. The wacko had found something when trying to discover the Ichiha Jutsu library, with Naruto being there to help her against any traps her target had left. She tried a password passed down by her father, but it failed to open the passenger safe or whatever it was. Grimacing, she wrote foolish little sister, maybe next time, then made a poking motion. That led to the revelation of a relatively small space, which had a large scroll inside, barely able to fit while folded up. The wacko asked Naruto to check it for traps with a water clone. The clone unfolded the scroll, which had the kanji for Hawk, Taka, on it. Fears forgotten, the wacko looked at the scroll in awe, few people got the chance to sign a summoning contract. But then, her blood ran cold. What if that man had signed it first? She checked, but none of the names belonged to him. The fact that Shisui had signed it last gave the girl hope. Well? Aren't you going to sign it? A voice said. The wacko lifted her head to see the original Naruto smiling at her. I'm not completely sure, she said, breathing slowly, this is a life-changing decision. Naruto shook his head. He said, summoning contracts don't grow on trees to bayo. I know that. The wacko said, snapping at him. Then, she said, sorry. Just let me think for a moment, sheepishly. Naruto's expression softened, and he nodded. The wacko thought of the cats, but cats didn't fly. Some other members of the Ichiha had had summoning contracts of their own, but most of those had been taken by the village or were still in the home of the summons she made her decision. Naruto and Bawako started using ninjutsu in their spars, but they were still roughly equal, Naruto's water clones would take a lot of chakra to dispel with the great fireball, and gave him enough of an advantage to negate Bawako's experience in ninjutsu. Not to mention it created mist, and Naruto had the better hearing and stealth, so Bawako had to dispel them up close. Bawako's sense of smell was amazing, but it didn't help as much without special training. In the meanwhile, Naruto took Bawako's advice to heart and practiced the E-Ranks, mainly the Kawarimi no Jutsu, so that he could do them faster and reduce the hand seal number. Bawako had kept training her hand seal speed. She wasn't as good as Naruto at reducing the number of hand seals needed, apparently, so she had to be fast. Fortunately for her, her Manu Al Dex Tirai Tai was much higher than his. That morning, though, they had to go to the academy, so they cut their training in hand seals short. Mido had sat close to Naruto and Buwako that day, much to Naruto's annoyance. Mido was the village's darling, the honorable daughter of the fourth. Naruto found the easy way the people of Konoha accepted her unfair. 
So, what have you two been learning? Kirby Sage is back in the village and teaching me how to use the wind element. Nito said, enthusiastically, her bright blue eyes shining. Hire, Buako said, speaking the usual way she did in the academy. Ah, okay, Nito said, what about you, Naruto? Naruto simply shrugged, both disliking the girl and not wanting to give away his abilities. Moo. Can't the two of you be more talkative? Nito said, pouting. Like Kiba never mind, bad example, she said. Naruto rolled his eyes, and Nito pounced. She said, so you do have a sense of humor, Naruto. I had begun to wonder to Bara. Naruto couldn't help grinning. Maybe Mito wasn't that bad, after all. Now that I think of it, she's never liked being called honorable daughter maybe, just maybe. You usually look so constipated. You're worse than Bawako, I think, Mito said innocently. Naruto took it back she was as troublesome as Shikamaru would say. Bawako and Naruto turned twin glares upon Mito, who laughed nervously and rubbed the back of her head, chin-length strawberry blonde hair moving around in sync. Naruto still wanted to show up that pampered princess, even if she wasn't that bad after all, he would show those idiot villagers that he was better than her. So, he decided to learn the wind element and surpass Namaka's Mito in it. Naruto was checking on his plants in Bawako's garden. Bawako was the only one who knew, but he had a habit of talking to plants. He had read in a book that that helped them grow, but in truth, he had done that even before. Had he somehow known that it helped them grow instinct I've lie, or was it just a habit he had gotten because he had been lonely? Arg, this intro speak Tian thing is hard. Naruto said out loud, tugging on his short blonde hair in frustration. He eventually noticed that two of his tomato plants had been uprooted, most likely by a dog or something like that. How'd I miss that? Naruto thought, angry at himself the ground around them was very messed up. He took one of them and put it in the ground again, but stopped himself before he did the same with the other. He knew it was too late for those plants it was foolish to try to get them back, like it was foolish to have believed that Asuna Sen would be able to come back from. Naruto wiped his eyes with his shirt near the shoulder because his hands and sleeves were dirty. No. No. He wouldn't cry anymore and he wouldn't give up. He was Uzumaki Naruto, damn it. Without bothering to think about it, Naruto put a little chakra into the tomato plant he had replanted. He made a bit of a mistake, though. He used his chakra in a strange way. Part of the chakra that went into the plant reminded him of the water clone, another part reminded him of freshly tilled soil, and something felt strange about the chakra in another way, too. Life is transient, and yet, some people are immortalized through their actions, through the light their very soul emits. That was the main principle of Ninshu. To reach understanding by linking their souls and their spiritual energy also known as Yin Chakra, with Yang Chakra physical energy as the medium. What is even less known is that Indra was not the only one to modify the process, though he was the only one to do so on purpose. Of all people, a direct descendant and reincarnate of the younger brother, Ashura, was responsible for that. His name was Senju Hashirama. As a very young boy, Hashirama was secretly injected with white Zetsu cells by the nameless being some called Black Zetsu, in a gambit to trick an Ichiha into combining Ashura's powers with Indra's. The operation succeeded beyond Black Zetsu's wildest dreams, in every way. Far beyond. New, insanely powerful abilities emerged in Hashirama, and old ones were made beyond powerful, such as his chakra and flesh regenerating at a rate even his wife, a Jinchuriki of the Kaiubi, was envious of. Ashirama unknowingly tapped into something resembling Ninshu for the first time, while taking care of a plant as a child, and went on to make a supreme form of Zetsu's Mokuten, combining Ashura's powerful chakra and natural talent for Sinjutsu with Zetsu's water and earth element, Hashirama's own talent for elemental ninjutsu and of course, what remained in Zetsu of that tree's essence. Many have theorized that Mokuten includes Yang's style, and is a Kekei Tauda rather than a Kekei Genkai, among them Tsunade. The truth, though, is a bit more complicated. Mokuten includes yin yang style, being closer to creation of all things than anything else. Unlike creation of all things, which doesn't use actual chakra but stamina because it splits it into yin and yang, Mokuten gives form with yin chakra and uses yang to give life while still keeping chakra in its balanced form. People could study Hashirama's abilities for a lifetime and still have more to find. People did study Mokuten for a lifetime and found very little, and not just because those who knew the most were very tight-lipped. What would it be like if someone had the Mokuten at full strength, naturally? None of Hashirama's direct descendants inherited his bloodline limit because none of them had Ashura's chakra. Or did they? History has a tendency of repeating itself. Naruto couldn't believe his eyes. The tomato plant he had thought dead was in perfect Kondai Tian. What did I just do? Naruto thought, were the other orphans and those caretakers old Tsuruko and Satsuna-san, right? Am I a freak? Panicking. He decided not to tell anyone about this. It was Naruto's turn to do the shopping, mainly because Buwako was too tired that day. 
the usual for the two of them was for Naruto to always cook and take care of the garden and Buwako to always go shopping and clean. He went to the butcher's when his eyes met the owner's. He saw the emotions play out on the man's face, from a smile, to unpleasant surprise, to anger and hatred. Out, the man said, evenly. Naruto's teeth and fists clenched. He saw that the man had an expression of fear and was about to pick up a knife, so he left the store before he did something he might or might not regret. Two women in the street gossiping started speaking about Naruto and how that thing shouldn't be allowed to be a ninja, so he glared at them, putting a bit of killing intent into the look, making the air heavy with his hatred. He could smell the piss running down the clothes of one of the women, he smirked at her with hate, making them both shudder. Naruto reached a park, going to a secluded corner to calm down, closing his eyes. Damn it. Why do they hate me like that? I don't get it he thought and took deep breaths to calm down while leaning on a tree. While he meditated like that, he felt like the tree was reaching out for him, as if it had chakra of its own. My imagination is working like crazy today Naruto thought, ignoring the little voice that reminded him of that tomato plant and told him he should at least tell Bawako. The next day, Iruka scolded Naruto. The man said, is it true, Naruto, that you hit a civilian? Huh? No, sensei, that never happened. I did make a woman piss herself by glaring at her, though, he, Naruto said, smug, but hiding the fact that he could use killing intent thanks to Buwako. Iruka shook his head. He said, that's bad enough, too. I'm disappointed in you, Naruto. You gave people fuel to spread lies about you. Besides, how can you protect Konoha's citizens if they're scared of you? Naruto looked down he didn't like disappointing his sensei. Sorry sensei, he said in a small voice, ignoring the very loud part of him that said he shouldn't apologize and that he didn't care about protecting Kanoha's citizens. Hey Naruto. Chin up, Iruka said, how about I come with you to apologize to that woman? Smiling. Hell no. Screw that bitch. Naruto said loudly, startling even himself with how VV he meant he was. Iruka looked shocked, then pained. He said, Naruto. No. Naruto said and bolted, hating the look he saw on his father figure's face, but he couldn't bring himself to apologize, even to Aruka. That night, Naruto forgot all about Aruka because he found out something else. Wait, so you found the Ichiha Shinobi library? Without taking me with you? It's dangerous. Naruto said to Bawako, worried. Bawako said, don't worry. I didn't even try to get into it yet, but I'm pretty sure that's it. Come on, follow me. She grabbed his hand, took him to one of the buildings in the Ichiha district, and switched on her Sharingan. She tapped the floor on three particular places, and a stone tablet appeared. She wrote some stuff with her finger, did some hand seals and there it was. A secret passage opened. What can you feel from there? Bawako asked, her eyes focusing on the darkness below. Naruto molded some chakra, but didn't let it form into a jutsu, controlling it in a way that made it enter everything around him, but in a different form somehow. So, he used his sensory skill to make sure that, other than him and Bawako, there was nothing alive larger than a cockroach there. Bawako hesitantly walked down the stairs of the passage, did a few hand seals to close the entrance apparently, her need to keep the Ichiha Jutsu library secret was stronger than her fear, and they were soon met by a huge room, or so it seemed to Naruto, but it was too dark to see any more. Suddenly, fire flashed, making Naruto jump. He immediately noticed Bawako with her hands in a tiger seal, next to a lit torch attached to the wall. More torches were lit that were connected to that one, just like in those manga that had brave archaeologists and explorers find ancient tombs. Incredible, isn't it? Bawaka remarked, her barely visible eyes betraying her excitement. They both looked around, there were scrolls and books everywhere, and according to Bawako, the library had three more levels underground. The both of them explored those levels the fourth and smallest level had things written by clan heads and just as important stuff, usually by the main families. What's this? Bawako remarked, advanced usage of Katen by Ichiha Madara and Izuna. Look, Bawako. The same guy, Madara. Has a guide no, many guides for Fuyutin, too. And a how-to on using fans like a gun by. Naruto said, enthusiastic. Inside voice, Naruto, Bawako scolded, didn't you want to learn about Fuyutin? You should put the basics book on the first level, somewhere we can get to it easily. I'll do the same for the moderately advanced Katen books, no clan head has written anything about the basics of Katen weight. What is it, Bawako? Naruto asked. Bawako showed him the thick book more like an encyclopedia tome in size called Raiden. The Full Guide of Going from Expert to Grandmaster, Part 2. What's so great about Wait, Ichiha Mikoto? Wasn't she your mother? Naruto said. He had met Ichiha Mikoto before, and other than Aruka and the man who owned a particular Raymond stand, to a point, she was the only adult who had ever wanted him around. Sometimes, he would see her look at him and get an angry, scary look on her face, but he would ignore those times she had been very good to him otherwise. 
Nowadays, he understood some things better, so, he wondered what she had been angry at. He didn't think it was Naruto himself. The wacko smiled, though her eyes had a sheen on them. She said, I think it's time I learned a second element. Naruto couldn't find it in him to disagree. They also found a guide on tricks with shuriken jutsu by Ichiha Shusui and Ichiha I that man, much to the disgust of his best friend, but she still kept it, mainly because of Shusui from what she said, a guide on wire use by Ichiha Fugaku, a guide on using the shunshin in battle by Ichiha Shusui, an incomplete documentation of two jutsu called the Raten Chakra Mode and Hell Stab. By Makoto again. She had supposedly started writing the lightning guide when she had been 21 and a recently retired Jounin. The Hell Stab and Raten Chakra Mode she had written when she had been 17, a rookie Jounin. She was one of the few who had survived going up against a third rakage in the first open battle of the Third Shinobi World War, though with a serious shoulder wound according to Bawako, who had just skimmed through some of the text. Other interesting things were a jutsu called Hausenkatsumabeni, which made use of the rare fire style chakra flow, written by that man with some help from Fugaku, the clone Great Explosion, by that man, along with the shadow clone, its kind of parent jutsu, also Goryuka, Great Dragon Flame, Gakumikyaku, Great Fire Annihilation, and Gakumasitsu, Great Fire Destruction. All written by Madara, the Goryuka co-written with Azuma like the previous guide. According to Bawako again, Garyuka needed very high chakra control, even though it was supposed to be weaker than the other two. In return, its range and something called versatility what was that? Was incredible, though it would also cost more chakra the further it went from the user. Finally, a series of books on Jinjutsu and Yin style. Some had been written by unknown clan heads and relatives thereof, others co-written by Madara and Izuna, some co-written by Shisui and that man, and yet more written in collaboration by both of Bawako's parents, Fugaku and Makoto. They had found a literal treasure trove of techniques, ninjutsu and otherwise. The two of them couldn't keep the smiles off their faces, and they ended up studying the ninja arts well into the night, though they were smart enough to start from the basics. Barely. Fortunately, the morning after they had gotten into the library was a Sunday. On the next school day, Naruto was nervous about seeing Aruka. He couldn't eat much of his breakfast and could only think of how angry his teacher might be. During the academy's lessons, Aruka didn't act any different, but when he dismissed the class, Naruto stayed behind. When Aruka didn't comment and simply started grading some tests, Naruto started sweating. He couldn't take it anymore and shouted, Aruka-sensei. Aruka looked up from his tests, his expression unreadable. He said, yes Naruto. Tests and pen left to the side of his desk. I'm really sorry, sensei. I shouldn't have blown you off like that. Naruto said, ending up rambling a bit after that, partly because he still didn't like apologizing, even to Aruka. Aruka held up a hand. He said, okay Naruto, I get it. Should I assume that apologizing to the civilians too is out of the question, though? Naruto looked everywhere but at Aruka. Your silence says it all, Aruka said, dryly, it's not easy to forgive, I know. Just don't lash out like that again. You got it, Aruka sensei. Naruto said seriously. Chapter 2. Interlude, CH15. Interlude, CH1.5. Snake, Ram, Monkey, Boar, Horse, Tiger Gakaku no Jutsu, Great Fireball Jutsu. The Wako molded chakra in her mouth, inhaling to fill her stomach with air, along with chakra. Then, she immediately blew all the air and chakra back out, turning it fire-natured as it left her mouth. Unlike what was had been usual, something went unexpectedly wrong or right in that last step, though. Whoosh. The Lake Bawako was aiming at it nearly boiled or rather it would have if it weren't so deep and somehow unnaturally resistant to fire and fire ninjutsu, even for water. There was a sudden improvement in the power and reduction in the chakra cost of her great fireball jutsu, and Bawako couldn't for the life of her figure out why and how. She couldn't just accept her good fortune, an unknown factor like that might come back to bite her, her brother's changing behavior ended up. No, I won't think about that. Naruto was also someone she had a hard time predicting, but in that case, it might be a good thing, she needed someone in her life to keep her sane she didn't want to snap and become like that man, and Naruto was perfect for the job. The fact that he was an excellent rival, with talent of a level she could never have expected, was the cherry on top. He makes you weak, whispered a voice that sounded a lot like Ida like that man. So much so, that she repeated her hand seals, letting out a great fireball that created even more steam than before, leaving her panting. Without meaning to, her mind went back to simpler times, her father teaching her the great fireball, to be exact. As expected, you are my child, after all. Bad Buako thought, a few drops almost but not quite falling out of her eyes. She longed for those simpler times, of piggyback rides on a brother who didn't seem to be a psychopath, of a mother and a father, and an entire clan of relatives, and hated herself for it. Boy, Buako. Time for lunch. 
a voice shouted, making Buwako start. Naruto was behind her, in the place where her father had been standing when he had acknowledged her, waving at her and asking if something was wrong. Humming. Buwako said, laughing without humor under her breath. Food was ready, it was Naruto's turn to cook, as usual. The both of them were about equally as good at cooking which was to say decent, maybe even good but not great, they had split the jobs that way for good reason, though. After they had eaten, Buwako had a question for Naruto, something she had been curious about for a while. So, she said, so, Naruto, I told you about who I hate the most. But who is the one you hate the most? Very interested in his answer. Naruto didn't even think it over and said, Yamanaka Maifa. His face twisting into an ugly expression. Buwako was surprised. The academy's deputy headmistress. What did she do? She said, smelling a story behind this. Naruto nodded and started speaking again. He said, you see, it started when Ami and her two cronies tried to bully me. I had weird hang-ups then, like avoiding hitting girls, so they beat me up when they saw I wouldn't react to their taunts the way they wanted. That's when I fought back, hitting Ami in the arm and accidentally snapping it, but a teacher saw the last part and brought me to Maifa's office. Ami's cronies tried to run away, but the teacher one of the assistants, Mizuki-sensei was thorough and took everyone to Maifa. Maifa questioned us, seemingly to understand what had happened, Ami tried to be excused to go to the hospital, but that woman wouldn't let her. Even the teacher wasn't allowed to leave or tell Ami's parents. It still seemed like I was going to be blamed for everything, though. But when Maifa was told that nobody else had seen what happened, a gleam appeared in her eye. Suddenly, none of us could move, I only heard a whisper of Shinranshin no Jutsu, mind body disturbance Jutsu. The teacher asked her what she was doing and why, and I still remember her words. She said, and I quote, this boy is an important military asset. I cannot let a lowly bully from a minor clan ruin that. If need be, I will make the girl disappear and make her family forget about her, she did something to all of them, and afterwards, Ami and her cronies remembered nothing, and she now thinks she broke her arm in a fall. Mizuki-sensei doesn't seem to remember, either, but the man has been different since then. I broke out of the jutsu holding me still in my anger. Maifa simply looked at me with a smile, complimenting my power for breaking her shinranshin. For some unknown reason, she didn't try to do anything to my memories, but she did tell me nobody would believe me if I told on her. That might mean she was working alone, but I'm not gonna trust a word that comes out of her mouth. After what happened that day, I realized what Kanoha is really like. I've let Aruka sensei believe that I'm going to protect Kanoha's citizens, but the only reasons I haven't left yet is because I have nowhere else to go and sensei himself. Recognition from them. Ha. Huh. Who cares. Sorry I haven't been very open with you. Iwako was looking at Naruto wide-eyed. The bitterness she saw from him reminded her of when she asked herself, why didn't the Anbu or the Hokage notice on that night? She asked him, are you going to take revenge on her? Looking at him in a new light. Naruto shook his head. He said, what's the point? If she's working with the higher-ups, then what am I going to do? Kill the Hokage too. He's the headmaster of the academy, after all. If she was working on her own, then she was trying to help me in her own twisted way. Very, very twisted. I still don't get the crap about military assets, though. You know what this means, though, right? Buwako said, smirking, we need to go to the Ichiha library so that we can research exactly what that bitch meant. After all, well the main thing the library contained was information on the ninja arts and jutsu, hence it being called the Ichiha Jutsu Library or Ichiha Shinobi Library, it had more than that. Information on various clans, even Kanoha's for some reason, especially Kanoha's memoirs of various Ichiha and more. Naruto said, Buwako. Looking at her with his mouth open, was it that rare for Buwako to use that kind of word? She smiled, or rather smirked again, smug for having flustered Naruto. He then smiled at Buwako shakily and hugged her tightly, chuckling under his breath. He's starting to grow on me Buwako thought, like a fungus which made her smirk wider. Chapter 3. After those rumors that Naruto had hit a civilian, Kanoha had become really fearful and hostile. To keep his agreement with Aruka, Naruto would avoid being out and about unless it was to go to the academy. Once, when a villager had thrown a rock at him, Naruto ended up playing a nasty prank on him later, that ended up with the man having an arm and leg broken, his skull fractured and in a coma for two weeks by accident. Naruto hadn't been caught. Even Aruka had never suspected a thing, but Naruto had sworn to himself that he would be more careful from then on, ignoring the voice in his mind, saying why bother. Well, it should at least be on purpose. I refuse to have so little control. After eavesdropping on a conversation between a teacher and that monster of a deputy headmistress, Yamanaka Maifa, he was able to find out how the teams were formed. He had the choice between being the rookie of the year and the dead last, and he decided on being dead last, mainly because the villagers of Kanoha might fear and hate him less if he weren't seen as powerful. 
though pretty much the only reason he cared was his promise to Aruka. On an unspoken agreement, Naruto and Bawako didn't use the Shadow Clone in their next few spars even after learning it well, much less its explosive variant, even though both of them had learned the two jutsu. Of course, that might have something to do with how much chakra they took and the way they split stamina between them Naruto's Shadow Clones barely had enough chakra to explode when he made more than five or six. Naruto started working on the wind-style training, he tried to cut a leaf using only his chakra, which was much harder than it sounded. He had already managed the water element exercise in less than two weeks. Bawako's feat of managing the lightning exercises about equally as quickly didn't surprise Naruto much, such feats were only to be expected when it came to her. After several months, Naruto managed to fully cut the leaf, partly thanks to Madara's advice in the prologue of his beginner's book, Imagine Two Spinning Discs Making Contact. The point of contact is where the cut spreads, in two directions. After that, he learned a D-rank wind in Jutsu, Fuiten. Shu, wind style. Thrust, which pushed one relatively small object or person away. It took him three weeks or so to learn Shu. He had also studied the Ichiha clan's information on the Senju clan's fighting styles. For some reason, Naruto felt drawn to the Senju clan, Hashirama and Tabarama the most of them. Well, Tabarama had been the greatest Suiten user in the history of Konoha. Naruto was good at learning by doing things with his body. That didn't mean that he wasn't good at learning from books and scrolls, though. It was just slightly slower going. He had needed some help from Aruka, but he managed to piece together some of the Senju clan styles, but Aruka would urge him not to try anything more advanced. Learning something wrongly is very difficult to undo Aruka had said. Naruto was also starting to get the hang of the fewer hand seals thing he recently managed to substitute with one of his water clones, without Bawako noticing in a spar, mainly because he could use the Kawarimi substitution body replacement with only one hand seal. The track record of the two of them remained about equal, and neither had managed more than two wins in a row. They also found out their elements through chakra paper, a process that held surprises for both of them. Bawako stared into well, nothing, after her paper crinkled into a ball, then burned to ash. According to her, her talent for fire style had increased recently, but that she would have two affinities was still a surprise. As for Naruto, he had expected water, but not earth in his affinities. The hawk started to train Bawako, including in Raiden and the basics of using her nose for tracking, and the advantage of her having a high-level teacher and him not having one proved to be too much. That was the first time Naruto lost three weeks in a row, so he went to Aruka for advice. Aruka-sensei, Naruto said, distressed, I need help to Bayo. What is it, Naruto? Iruka said, putting down his cup of tea calmly. So, Naruto told him the problem without details. He told him that he had a rival and that they were surpassing him, none of the skills he could learn at the moment could counter their skills and he didn't want to get left behind, would his rival throw him away in that case? Iruka smiled a bit. He said, firstly, if you two are friends, not just rivals, then they won't throw you away. Secondly, have you tried improving what you're best at instead of learning new skills? Try not to learn too much at once, it's like trying to look left and right at the same time. Naruto thought it over. Wind style was a bust, he just wasn't good enough at it to counter Bawako's improved Raiden. Even if he learned Earth Jutsu, Earth simply wasn't good against lightning. So, that left the water element. Yes he thought, there has to be a reason it's not considered weak to lightning, conductor or not. Thanks Aruka sensei Naruto said with a grin and hugged his teacher. Ow. Can't breathe, Aruka said, getting paler and paler. Oops. Sorry, sensei, Naruto said, blushing in embarrassment, and released the man. Naruto read up on water and discovered that only when the water had impurities did it remain a good conductor of electricity. So, he looked into some books on chemistry and physics. He managed to purify the water on the fly, which took him nearly as long to manage as extracting the water from a leaf without hand seals had, despite help and training from shadow clones, a trick which he discovered thanks to Aruka's advice, again. It was possibly the most difficult skill he had ever tried to learn related to the water element. Naruto had to invent a whole new hand seal through knowledge of chakra theory and clone trial and error both. To be exact, he made a modified version of the dog seal, which was less costly than trying an actual higher level purified jutsu with its original hand seals. He only had the chakra reserves of a slightly above average adult chunin if he was estimating things right, but the quick restoration of his chakra and his great chakra control allowed him to train with two clones for hours, more clones, when he was doing something less costly, like when he made the new hand seal. Naruto had a new appreciation for Senju Tabarama, who had been a very productive jutsu inventor. Naruto's clones had nearly blown themselves up more than once when making the new hand seal. The help of a certain medic nin didn't hurt, with his own custom food pills, which allowed him to get enough nutrients and energy for Naruto, not the need to take many breaks to eat when training. 
the skill of purifying the water, despite how costly it was in terms of chakra, got him the win for two matches straight. Saratobi Hirazan, the third Hokage was in the academy, and all the students stood at attention. He gave a speech and introduced an Anbu by the codename Wildcat Wildcat, told them about his Mokuten, which was the combination of water and earth nature chakra, and showed them two jutsu. The Moku Bunshin, wood clone, and an Injutsu which made houses out of nowhere. Naruto couldn't believe his eyes and ears. Could it be could he have Mokuten? He met Bawako's eyes, and the same shock was in them. Naruto tried for days to use the wood clone, to no avail. Again. Tiger, dog, snake, Mokuten. Moku Bunshin no Jutsu. Nothing again. Damn it, he said, fists clenched, why the hell can't I do it? The wacko whispered that a bloodline might need to be activated in an intense situation first, but Naruto wouldn't give up, he knew he could do it as he was. The next try created a bit of sawdust, which didn't look like much, but it was, in fact, his first success in using Mokuten. If he ignored how healthy and strong his trees and plants were, and how incredibly high quality the fruit and vegetables were, that is. In hindsight, it was obvious. When he was in a good mood, the plant seemed more alive, but he had thought that was a trick of the light. As for the time he had brought a dead plant back to life, that was probably a fluke he'd need lots of practice to manage again. Yada. Naruto sat and started jumping around. After winding down, he saw Bawako's serious expression. He said, what's wrong, Bawako? So, you're a senju, Bawako said, expression unreadable. Well, yes, apparently. Is that gonna be a problem? Naruto said. Will she not want to talk to me again? Bawako shook her head and smiled, she actually smiled. She said, no, but it's fitting, don't you think? Fitting? Naruto asked, a bit confused. Madara and Hashirama, Bawako explained, only one could match the other, it might well be the start of something legendary, this rivalry we share. Naruto smiled too, for real, and all plant life around them came alive. Wait, Naruto said, does that mean Tsunade Sama is my mother or grandmother, or something? Bawako blinked. She said, I didn't think of that. Should we look for her? I could put the hawks on a search. Naruto said yes to the idea and felt really happy. I might have a living family member out there. He nearly didn't notice that Bawako looked sad and envious. Nearly. After all, he had gotten very good at reading his only friend. He put a hand on Bawako's shoulder. He could see how she had put on a brave face but was hurting inside, he didn't begrudge her the envy she felt and silently showed his support. The Wacko unexpectedly hugged him and Naruto couldn't believe his senses. It was only the second time she had initiated something like that outside of their sleeping arrangements and the first time it lasted so long. She trembled a bit in his arms, but she didn't cry. She might not be able to cry anymore. Naruto was planning his tactics on their new spar. He couldn't think of how to beat Wacko a third time in a row, but he would try his best, she had copied him in using shadow clones to train and had learned a new jutsu that could rip through his defenses. Perhaps Aruka's advice of playing to his strengths would hold true again. Mokuten was a tough nut to crack, so he wouldn't keep on that for the time being. He'd look up in the Ichiha archives what his female relative was known for, other than her medical ninjutsu, same with Hashirama. He'd also ask Aruka. Well, let's see, Aruka said, nursing a cup of tea, Tsunade Sama. Where do I start? You see, Tsunade Sama is known for her great chakra-enhanced physical strength, Shadai Sama was also a medic nin, like his granddaughter. Any details on her strength? Naruto asked, leaning forward in interest. That sounded familiar. Well, Iruka said, I don't know for sure, but apparently the key to her enhanced strength is timing, precise chakra control and knowledge of anatomy. She's also naturally strong, even without it. Why? Do you want to try to reverse engineer it? Maybe, Naruto said, smiling at Iruka mysteriously, or, at least, that was what Naruto hoped it looked like. Naruto had managed something like Tsunade's strength before no, don't think about it. Well, I wish you luck, Iruka said, winking at Naruto, it's going to be a long and difficult road. Naruto nodded and thanked Iruka, snapping out of his thoughts. He decided to stay there and finish his own tea, Iruka promised that he would treat him to lots of ramen if he managed to get the basics of Tsunade's chakra-enhanced strength. Considering the fact that he had probably had the basics instinctively since four years of age no. I decided I won't think of that. I won't. Naruto shook his head and shrugged his shoulders repeatedly. He tried to think of something, anything, else. His academy teacher. Yeah. Hiruka had stopped asking Naruto to raise his grades because Naruto had told him that he was trying to rig the team selection. That might have given away the fact that Bawako was his rival, but he didn't mind Naruka was discreet. He wouldn't tell anyone unless he was certain, at least. A tear ran down his face and it got slightly harder to breathe because his nose had started clogging. Asuna-sen why? Naruto shook himself out of the memories. 
Naruto had put together what he had found out from the Ichiha Shinobi library and what Aruka had told him. He would try to use his strength beyond lethal situations or near lethal, like those bullies he had sent to the hospital. Mold Yang's style chakra at the right moment, put it into my arms, including the shoulders and shoulder blades, and release it as I punch. Ah. It had only taken him a few days to get down the basics of Yang's style by making a leaf harder, a record that went beyond even his water style training, which had been sped up by the fact he had already gotten down a C-rank water element ninjutsu in the form of the water clone. He destroyed the small tree he was using as a target with one punch. He was hurt by the backlash, though. His right arm was broken in at least one place, and his knuckles were bleeding. It was lucky he healed extremely quickly. So, he decided to work more on his chakra control and anatomy knowledge, first, he would read books while his arm was healing on its own. If his reading speed was slower because of the distraction of the pain and being reduced to one hand, well, that wasn't a huge problem. His pain tolerance was insanely high, according to Bawako. Well, all those bullying kids at the first orphanage helped. Especially those that nearly killed me. After his arm got better he, the original, did a new chakra control exercise, the tree climbing, while two clones were slaving over his book on the human body and its workings. Now, he could climb a tree without using his hands. It took him only three tries until he was able to manage it, then, he stuck leaves on himself to make the whole thing harder. Unfortunately, the water walking exercise was much more difficult. One step, two crap. Splash. Naruto kept failing at it, but he didn't stop trying. It took him hours, especially with the distraction of shadow clones dispelling and him recreating them, without using them to help him get the exercise, but he managed to stand on water shakily. The next day, he was able to spar with a shadow clone without falling in, with a leaf stuck on his forehead, so he called it quits and went back to trying to use Tsunade's strength technique. Consciously, at least. He was targeting a boulder this time because he didn't want to cause any more damage to trees. His knuckles bled again, but it was skin deep, he didn't break his arm when he cracked the boulder. He was pretty sure that he had made his punch stronger than the previous time and much stronger than the subconscious uses of his past. Ugh. He would go to the hospital to be certain that his arm had healed correctly before, though, mainly because Bawako would be on his ass if he didn't. Ugh again. So, you say that you broke your arm in at least one place yesterday. The medic nin, Yakushi Kabuto the same one who had given him food pill said, I can see that your bones have broken and mended perfectly, in two places. It's like weeks or months of mending have taken place. You have an amazing healing factor, Naruto-kun. In the future, though, be sure to come to me immediately, as there is always the chance you will heal incorrectly. Naruto nodded with a smile and said, okay, Kabuto-sensei. Kabuto rubbed his head in embarrassment. He said, no need to be so formal, Naruto-kun, I've told you that before. Call me Kabuto-san, or something. Very well, Kabuto-san. Thank you for your help, Naruto said and bowed to the teenage medic Nin. This was the first person to ever treat him as a human being in the hospital, so he made sure to always be polite and courteous. At first, he had feared that Kabuto was trying to poison him with those pills, especially since Kabuto had waived the usual fee, but the older male had proved himself good on his word. The 15-year-old, white, gray. Haired medic Nin had unofficially become Naruto's physician Kabuto was always called upon whenever Naruto was in the hospital, on Kabuto's own request. The man also often gave Naruto tips on nutrition. Kabuto nodded back and gave him a piece of advice. One last thing, Naruto-kun. Make sure to get enough nutrients, especially red meat, fish and yogurt for proteins, certain vitamins and calcium. There is a chance that healing your bones like that has used a lot of your body's stores of nutrients and you don't eat enough red meat, I could tell, Kabuto said, serious as only a medic nin or doctor giving advice could be. Naruto grimaced. Yogurt was yucky, but he would bear with it, he already had AM and Tucci to nag him to drink milk, so he wasn't lacking in calcium, just in case Naruto's healing took a lot of nutrients, though, he had better be careful. He would make sure to eat more meat as well. It wasn't that he didn't like it, it was just something Bawako, who did most of the shopping, often forgot to buy. After all, the nearest butcher was a bit too worshipful of Bawako and disliked Naruto very much, which Bawako couldn't stand he didn't blame her after that guy had kicked Naruto out with no reason. Maybe hunting animals would be better, or at least sending clones to keep from losing out on training time. The Budo also said that most of the more obscure vitamins that are necessary to convert calcium effectively and efficiently are actually present in more than high enough of a concentration in you, which is rather rare. You probably won't need supplements other than my food pills, Naruto-kun, Kabuto said afterwards. Then, the older male absentmindedly told Naruto he was free to go, so Naruto left but made sure to pay Kabuto first. It must be all those fruits and vegetables that keep me from missing vitamins, Naruto thought. 
He had made it his mission to obtain seeds and other samples of various kinds of trees, bushes and plants that produced something edible, then, he made them grow relatively quickly with his Mokuten. Larger scale jutsu or any actual combat jutsu of that element were still beyond him, he could only make lower sized trees, too. The wood clone was still something he couldn't use well, it was like something had helped him with the dead tomato plant, maybe it was the emotions he had felt then. He had played around with the earth element a bit, but couldn't put much time into it. He had managed to cover a leaf with a little bit of dirt over the past month, it should take another month to manage it perfectly at that pace. The time of the spar between Naruto and Bawako had arrived, and Bawako couldn't wait. The two of them stood in a stance, and on an unspoken signal, they attacked each other with Tejutsu. They knew each other's style too well to manage anything, though, so Bawako activated her very basic and weak version of the Hell Stab. Naruto punched the ground. Bawako lost her balance and very nearly pierced herself with her own Jutsu. By the time she recovered, Naruto was on her and punched her in the gut. Bawako's world was spinning, and she thought, what the hell happened? Naruto had been smug for the entire day, Bawako couldn't be too angry at him, but she was angry at herself for losing so easily. She had to step up her game. But what would she work on? It needed to be too quick to allow Naruto to disrupt her balance, or maybe yes, Hausenka no Jutsu, Phoenix Age Fire Phoenix Flower Jutsu, should work. After all, the Hell Stab was a bust for now. The information was too incomplete, it was weaker without learning the Raten Chakra mode, and even if she had been able to use it well, the full version was too lethal for a spar. When she was better rested, Bawako made sure to memorize the Hausenka no Jutsu scroll from the Genin section of the library. After managing that, she went to practice it by the lake. She went through the hand seals, and. Nai-san, Nai-san. Please show me one of your Jutsu. Bawako said, hoping that her brother would show her something amazing. She half expected a poke in the forehead, but Itachi nodded, saying, all right, Bawako. I have some time now that the Chunin exams are over. Her brother had just become a Chunin at 10 he was amazing. He took her to a training ground near a river. The Jutsu Itachi showed her was called Hausenkatsuma Beni, Crimson Claw of the Phoenix Phoenix Flower, Crimson Nail Phoenix Age Fire, Crimson Claw. He threw a few shuriken and set them on fire. Then, those flaming shuriken completely destroyed a few targets, changing their course in midair. Wow. How did you do that, Nai-san? The shuriken moved on their own. Is it because of the fire? Is moving like that the difference between the house and Kano Jutsu dad showed me and this one? Is it? Poke. The wako rubbed her forehead, saying, ow. Nai-san. You're mean. Itachi shook his head in exasperation and said, foolish little sister. One question at a time. Now, this is a chakra flow jutsu, using the fire element in chakra flow is very difficult, so it is rare. All father is capable of using this jutsu, I am the only one to truly master it in generations, the only one with fire chakra flow of this caliber or higher in Kanoha definitely higher, I admit was Siratobi Sasuke, Hokage-sama's father. When you were in mother's womb, we thought you were a boy, so you nearly got named Sasuke. All Bawako heard was that her brother was incredible, she didn't much care about people who had died. Wait a moment. Nai-san, Bawako said, where did the name Bawako come from then? Thoughtful. Like Saratobi Sasuke, Hokage-sama's father, was one of the strongest male shinobi of his generation, Saratobi Bawako Hokage-sama's late wife was one of the strongest kanoichi of her own. Saratobi Sasuke was an incredible katan, fire style, user, while Saratobi Bawako used futon, wind style, with paper fans to augment her husband's own fire style from afar. It was my idea to name you Sasuke or Bawako, Itachi said, but I digress. The difference between Hausenka and Hausenka Tsumabeni is like the cool early morning weather and the blazing early afternoon sun, Itachi said, smiling fondly. Itachi then said that Hausenka Tsumabeni was far hotter and could be controlled from afar much better than Hausenka. Why didn't you say that in the first place, Nai-san? Bawako said, definitely not pouting. The fire jutsu fizzled out, making Bawako breathe out a ball of fire smaller than an adult's fingernail. Bawako shook her head and tried again. She had to be strong enough to beat Naruto and kill that man, of course. The Wako tried for hours to get that jutsu, even using shadow clones like Naruto, but it didn't help her get it. Flashbacks of that man kept getting into her mind. She hated him, didn't she? Then, why did she keep remembering all that? What was worse, she couldn't detect a single hint of that man faking his emotions even years later. Was he that great of an actor? What was the truth and what was a lie? People live their lives by what they accept as correct and true. But what does it mean to be correct or true? Such vague concepts their reality may well be only an illusion. I'll always be there for you, even as an obstacle for you to overcome. That's what big brothers are for. Ichiha Itachi was so confusing. 
At first glance, he was either a psychopath and pretending all along, or someone who had snapped under the pressures of ninja life and gone homicidally insane, then pretended to have been a psychopath all along for some unknown reason. All Bawako could tell was that Itachi was a lying liar who lied. But what was true and what was a lie? Fact was, Itachi had tortured her with their clan's deaths for hours, making her fall unconscious for close to three days, though she had been found in the outdoors, not inside her parents' house, for some unknown reason. I did it to test the limits of my abilities. There is no value in killing the likes of you foolish little sister, if you wish to kill me, then hate me, scorn me, and survive in an unsightly way. Run, run and cling to your pitiful life. The wacko grit her teeth, but something struck her as strange once again. She thought that man's words over and realized what was wrong. The man had killed even the babies, she shuddered at that. Then, why had he told her she wasn't worth killing? Had he only been trying to rile her up to keep her from thinking about any inconsistencies? If so, it had worked. It fucking worked. But what was the true purpose? She had already established that Itachi was one of the biggest liars in existence, but there had to be something she was missing. Did it have something to do with his tears on that day? Wait, tears? Why did she remember Itachi shedding tears when he was attacking her, and why has she only remembered now? She also remembered pursuing Itachi and injuring him slightly. The mystery deepens Buwako thought. I also hadn't expected I had caught him off guard. Did he use a Jinjutsu to make me forget? Why, though? Ichiha Itachi was more complicated than he had allowed her to see, and she would make sure to investigate him thoroughly before killing him. Going back to practicing Hausenka no Jutsu, she swore that Itachi wouldn't get to pull the wool over her eyes ever again. After two days of trying to get Hausenka no Jutsu, Buwako was feeling impatient. Should she well, it worked for Naruto and for the summoning Jutsu Buwako thought, why not now? So, Buwako went to Aruka for advice. The man was sitting at his office, probably grading assignments. The girl cleared her throat, making Aruka finally acknowledge her presence. Aruka said, Buwako. What brings you here today? Aruka-sensei, Buwako said, reluctantly showing the man respect, I need some advice. Aruka put down his pen and looked at Buwako in curiosity. He said, I see, stopping at that. Buwako took a deep breath and told Aruka that she was trying to learn a jutsu, but found it impossible to manage it. She even told him about the flashbacks to that man that she got whenever she tried it. Aruka mulled it over for a bit, then said, that jutsu is a katan, fire style. Yes, Buwako said, not elaborating. I think I see the problem after all, I am a Katen user myself, though my primary element is water, Iruka said, taking on a lecture pose, fire is unique in that it is fueled by the user's passion. An indecisive and torn heart cannot perform fire style well. Well all jutsu need focus and one spiritual energy, thus their chakra is affected by emotions, fire is especially unforgiving of lapses. For most jutsu, the most consistent results come when the user is calm and focused. Fire needs both that and passion, you need to be in control of your passion. Not the other way around. Especially when first learning a jutsu. The wacko digested that for a few moments. She hated that man, didn't she? Why was she torn? But she wouldn't lie to herself she was, after all, very confused by Itachi's behavior. Then, deciding to bite the shuriken, she said, what kind of emotions are best and how do I get through my mental block? Iruka said, good question, rubbing the back of his head. Then, he said, the best kind of emotions to use are hatred and love, though protectiveness and lust for battle work too. As for your mental block well, I'm not sure. Have you tried thinking of someone other than your brother? If you have someone you want to protect, it might help. The wacko let out a quiet sigh, then said, thanks Aruka sensei trying to find how exactly she would follow Aruka's advice. You're welcome Bawako. Do you know that another student came to me for help with their suetan, water style, chakra sensing and reverse engineering tsunade sama and shadai sama's techniques relatively recently? Iruka said, giving her a knowing smile. Then, he said, you are also not the first Ichiha I have ever interacted with. Just remember this. Ichiha have a tendency of withdrawing into themselves whenever their emotions get too intense due to fear. I can only hope you are brave enough when that time comes. Is that a challenge? The wacko shrugged, bid Aruka goodbye and left, thinking, that teacher is too smart for his own good. Well, I shouldn't use shadow clones for now. They might affect my concentration and spiritual energy. As for Aruka's last few sentences, the wacko found them cryptic and clear at the same time. The wacko was back at the pier. She went through the hand seals for Hausenka no Jutsu. She imagined Naruto and protecting him against enemy ninjas, letting out a much larger ball of fire it wasn't right yet, though. Hausenka released multiple balls of fire, not just one, and it was still weaker than it should be. After a bit of thought about Itachi and Naruto, Buwako's blood ran cold. What if that man kills Naruto just because he's my f-friend? She thought, shivering a bit after she thought of that. 
should I stop being friends with him? She knew it would devastate Naruto, she was his only and best friend. No so this is what Aruka warned me about. Run, run and cling to life pitifully like Itachi said. No. Fuck that. I am not a coward. I will figure out something else. The alternative was to get strong enough to protect Naruto no, that was an insult to him and his resolve and talent. Then, to fight by his side as an equal, protect one another. There would be no dying for Naruto while she was around. There would be no easy win for Naruto in the spars between them, either, Ichihabawako does not lose, and I won't let that monster take anything more from me. Rat, tiger, dog, ox, rabbit, tiger. Hausenka no jutsu. Bawako said in her mind, letting out a dense ball of fire nature chakra, then another, which exploded when they met the lake. Then, she decided to try Gakaku no jutsu, great, fireball jutsu, while thinking of how she'd protect Naruto from Itachi and fight by Naruto's side. Hatred and protectiveness filled her in equal measures, and instead of a continuous flow, she breathed out a powerful ball which moved much faster than any of her katan had before, fell into the lake, then exploded, making the lake shower her with water. She stayed in place, looking at the giant water shower, and yet the water didn't quite reach her. That was powerful. She thought that one old woman would have said I've been blessed by a Matarasu in Kagetsuchi. The wako heard a sigh and realized someone had a grip on her shirt. The grip let up, and she turned to see Naruto. Naruto said, and you call me reckless. What was that? Gesturing at the lake, an angry frown on his face. The wako realized that Naruto had protected her and was speechless. Naruto's expression changed, looking at her with concern. He said, are you okay, the wako? The wako shook the mix of emotions off and said, I'm better off than I've been in months, realizing that she meant it. Naruto looked confused, but he said, all right. Just don't do that again. Please, seriously. The wako said, I'll try, but no promises, walking less carefully than before, almost skipping. Naruto said, oi, the wako, wait for me. It took Bawako three more days of testing the ways she released the chakra to manage to get Hausenka no Jutsu to a satisfactory level of mastery, and one more, that one with clones, to improve it to where it was usable in a real battle, or at least an intense spar. It had taken Naruto over a month to go from sawdust to splinters to a functioning dummy, and another ten days to make an actual wood clone. Unfortunately, Bawako's new Jutsu, Hausenka no Jutsu, was a decent counter to water clones, shadow clones and wood clones. According to Bawako, her fire element in general had gotten even stronger recently something he had seen for himself, too. Fortunately for him, his skill with water ninjutsu had also gone up thanks to his shadow clones practicing it, he learned Wild Water Wave, a C-ranked water ninjutsu which unleashed a waterfall-like wave from the user's mouth to wash away their foes. Thanks to help from Aruka, his own improved chakra control and his shadow clones, it took him less than a week to learn it. So, they were back to winning and losing alternately. Naruto would have liked to have learned the Kurigakur no Jutsu, hiding in the Mist Jutsu, but even the Achiha hadn't managed to copy everything. The Wako had taken to using Shadow Clones to train, too. She had once nearly fried herself and injured her fingers on impact with a target when trying Lightning Jutsu another time. Thus she was much more careful with the Lightning element nowadays, mainly using clones for new things. She still had a small scar near her wrist, though thanks to Kabuto, her fingers had healed perfectly. Naruto was a month or two before reaching nine years of age when Bawako came up to him with news. She said, Naruto, the hawks have found your relative. Tsunade is in Shiruku City right now, in the south of the Land of Fire. Yosh. So, how will we reach her? I hope you have a plan, Naruto said, bouncing on his feet. Of course I do, Bawako said, looking somewhat offended. She then said, Fuinjutsu, the art of sealing. The hawks have taught me about the summoning and reverse summoning jutsu, I have known the basics of sealing since an early age, thanks to my parents, so I made this, showing him a temporary tattoo. She also said something about making a contract. It goes this way. We use both or blood to apply the tattoo, Bawako said, then, we will be able to summon one another or send a distress signal by putting blood on the tattoo. So, where do you want yours? Naruto was worried over what Aruka would say if he saw his tattoo, but he simply said fuck it and told Bawako to put it on his left bicep. Bawako put her own on her right shoulder, and the two of them finalized the contract by cutting their palms Naruto more deeply, because he healed fast and putting blood on each other's tattoo. Let's try it. Naruto said, fired up. Okay, Bawako said, with just as much enthusiasm, even though it was hidden under indifference as a poker face. But first, we make sure the tattoos are invisible. Fortunately, I've managed to make enough progress in sealing to be able to include that, she said after that. She taught him the hand seals to make it invisible, so that it only appeared when his blood was splashed on it. It also would alert the other, as soon as blood would fall on the tattoo and send them the other's position. 
Naruto was just glad that Iruka wouldn't see the tattoo, especially considering Bawako intended to make a permanent version when she was more confident in her fuinjutsu skills. You learn quickly, as expected of my rival, Bawako said, looking impressed, have you ever considered learning fuinjutsu? It's very useful, I never knew until now, Naruto said, impressed, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. There is no guarantee it even worked. Bawako glared at him, offended. Let's just get on with it, she said. She went to the other side of the small house and summoned him 3 meters 10 feet in the air, dropping him on his ass. Ow ow ow. You little Naruto said, a bit annoyed, especially now that he looked at Bawako's smug smirk. Giving Bawako a glare that promised retribution, he bit his right hand's thumb and smeared the blood onto the tattoo, running through the correct hand seal's pop. Bawako appeared next to him, her feet sinking into a mud puddle made by Naruto's water ninjutsu earlier. So, I think it's safe to say it works, Naruto said happily, ignoring Bawako's glare, but will it take more chakra with more distance? It took a huge chunk of my reserves right now. Bawako shook her head. She said, it's a space-time jutsu. It takes the same amount of chakra at all distances and has no distance limit, looking at Naruto as if it were obvious, and damn, it was obvious. Naruto was great at learning, but some things were taught ahead of time to clan children. Apparently, Bawako still had more chakra than Naruto did, which was why the jutsu had taken a lot out of him. Bawako appeared just outside a particular town. The forest out there was lush and beautiful, and the trees were quite tall, though not especially thick. After admiring the scenery, she went through the motions to summon Naruto. Poof. Naruto appeared in smoke. Bawako dismissed Garuda, the granddaughter of the hawk boss and Bawako's personal summon. Her mind wandered to the first time she had met them. Bawako was in the Achiha district's training ground, which was protected by seals to ensure privacy. Her reason was so that she could test the summoning jutsu after signing the hawk contract. It had taken quite a bit of research read. Spying on shinobi training, then asking Aruka when that had failed on her part and Naruto's to discover the hand seals of the summoning jutsu. She bit her thumb, drawing blood, and went through the sequence. Boar, dog, bird, monkey, ram. She said, Kuchius no jutsu, summoning technique. In a small cloud of smoke came a large colorful egg what the crap is that? Bawako said, breaking her calm facade. Naruto snickered a bit and said, wow, I did expect that your first try would be at least a little bad, but this is an epic failure. Bawako said, if you have nothing important to say, stay silent, annoyed by both the words and the snickering. Okay, how about this? Naruto said and suddenly turned serious. He then said, keep the flow of chakra stable, no sudden lowering or increasing of the output. You should also put at least three times as much chakra as you did this time into it. Bawako calmed down at hearing that and decided to take the resident chakra sensor's advice. She repeated her previous actions, this time putting over five times as much chakra into the jutsu and keeping the output as even as she could. The jutsu resulted in a much larger cloud of smoke, in which a relatively small brown hawk appeared. It flapped its wings erratically a few times, looking disoriented, but it stabilized very quickly. It said, who is the one that summoned me? Naruto said, wait. The bird talked. Shocked, only to receive an identical deadpan idiot from both the hawk and Bawako. Ignoring Naruto and his cloud of depression, Bawako looked the hawk in the eye and said, I think I'm going to like you. My name is Ichiha Bawako, and I'm the one who summoned you, smirking. Interesting, the hawk said, my name is Garuda. Our last summoner was Ichiha Shisui, do you happen to be his direct descendant? Bawako admitted she wasn't. She also told Garuda of the Ichiha clan downfall and how Shisui had died a year or two before it, without ever having children. Shit, Garuda said, grandmother needs to hear about this, and disappeared in another cloud of smoke. Naruto snickered again and said, your summon just ditched you. By the way, did you have to not tell me that summoned creatures talked? Yes, I did. And yes, it did ditch me, Bawako said, an eyebrow twitching. Then she said, by the way, summons can reverse summon their contractor, so there's a chance that. After a brief bout of nausea, Bawako found herself on a huge meadow. She looked around, seeing mist not far above her. She activated her Sharingan and realized she was seeing the clouds, not mist. A plateau. She thought, because she could make out the actual ground far away, indicating that she was at the highest point of said plateau. Ichiha Bawako, a booming voice said. Bawako instantly turned around, making her neck ache. She saw the largest bird she had ever encountered by far in front of her, the Sharingan seeing every detail. Its upper parts were black, whereas its belly and tail was dark gray, and the rest of it was very light gray, with light red markings around intelligent red eyes. The wacko said, are you the boss summon? Not lowering her guard, refusing to admit to being startled. Indeed I am, the gigantic bird said, welcome to the great sky plateau, home to the hawk clan. 
My name is Takamichi, boss of the Hawk contract. I am also Garuda's grandmother. She apparently took an immediate shine to you, it remains to be seen whether the rest of us will be as impressed, of course. The wako bowed moderately deeply, as if addressing an equal and said, it's an honor to meet you, Takamichi-san. Immediately, the wako could see that the hawk boss was displeased, but she refused to be cowed and maintained eye contact, not even deactivating her Sharingan. Takamichi now looked pleased. She said, impressive. You are not easy to intimidate and are a proud bird I mean person. Even a boss summon's ire is not enough to make you bow down. How did she manage to fool me with the Sharingan on when she pretended to be annoyed at me? The wako thought, incredulous, her respect for Takamichi increasing. Out loud, she said, so, glaring at me was a test. Indeed it was, Takamichi said, Ichiha Bawako, we of the Hawk Clan are very long-lived even for summons. I once met Ichiha Madara personally, when I was but a youngling, and my then current summoner, and I had the privilege to participate in a hunt with him. You remind me of him the most. I truly hope that you won't take after his worst points, though. That sounded ominous. Still, Bawako nodded at Takamichi and said, anything else I should know. Only this, Takamichi said, at most, two contracts of animal clans are possible for a person. However, you will have to get approval from me and the Hawk Council first for such a thing, on the other hand, contracts with other humans do not interfere. Hopefully, you won't relegate us Hawks to second fiddle like Shisui did in favor of the Crows. I see, Buwako said after thinking it over, what about training? I don't have a teacher right now. Takamichi said, when you are able to summon me, we will speak of that, until then, only basic training will be available. What is your primary element? Lightning, I think, Buwako said, hiding her rising mental fatigue expertly. My own element, Takamichi said, impress me and I will take over your elemental training myself. Understood. Am I dismissed now? Buwako said evenly. Takamichi said, by all means, this time sounding amused. When Buwako realized she didn't know how to end the summoning, she simply decided to reason it out on her own. First, she tried to feel out her connection with the Hawks. Then, when that failed, she tried to find the connection her chakra network had to her previous position. The last thing she saw before disappearing from the land of the hawks was Takamichi's incredulous expression. Is something wrong? The wako was startled out of her daydreams by Naruto's voice. She said, nothing, just thinking. Naruto didn't reply. The two of them were following what must be Tsunade's chakra, thanks to Naruto's sensory capabilities. His range was a bit less than 400 meters at most less than a quarter of a mile, but his skill was great and precise enough that he could follow very small traces of the chakra that had been left around the city. Strange, though, that someone so skilled would leave obvious enough trails to follow, or so Buwako thought. She was able to put a scent to the trail, and it was full of alcohol. She decided to let Naruto do all the work unless her help became necessary. If Tsunade was drunk, though, it would explain why she was so easy for Naruto to sense. She's with another Kanoichi and an animal in that bar. Naruto said, uncertainty clouding his tone. What is one of the Sanin doing in a seedy place like this? Buwako said, just as bemused. They entered the seedy watering hole without bothering to put up a transformation, such a thing would only put Tsunade on guard. The customers there looked at them, but immediately forgot about them, nobody tried to escort them out, either. It made Buwako wonder. The two of them walked up to the young-looking blonde and the brunette woman with a pig in her arms. The wako said, are you sure this is your relative? She looks a bit too young to be her. I don't understand it either, Naruto said. Oi, are you Tsunade? He said with all the subtlety of a sledgehammer. The wako wanted to roll her eyes and face palm at his bluntness, but she controlled herself. The blonde was visibly drunk. She said, I am. Who's asking, brats? Slurring only a little despite her condition. The wako introduced herself, then Naruto did so for himself. My name is Naruto, and I think we're related, Naruto said. Tsunade blinked. Then, she sobered up all of a sudden. She said, what made you reach that conclusion? Very seriously. The wako intervened, saying, we're better off taking this outside, where people can't see us. Tsunade narrowed her eyes and said, very well. The brunette whispered something in the blonde's ears, but Tsunade shook her head, saying something in turn. The four of them, plus Pig, walked into the forest outside the town. The wako could tell that the two adults had their senses peeled, likely for a potential ambush. On an unseen signal, all of them stopped walking. Naruto said, wait. I'll check for eavesdroppers, making a one-handed hand seal, and Buwako realized he was using his chakra sensor skill. She also discreetly scanned around with her Sharingan. That put the two adult women even more on guard, but they relaxed when nothing came of Naruto's and Buwako's gesture. The blonde woman said, okay, we're far enough here. What was such a secret that you had to use all those precautions? Naruto said, you'll see in a moment. Mokuten. 
Moku Bunshin no Jutsu, Wood Style. Wood Clone Jutsu. Going through a few hand seals. It took a few seconds, but the clones formed. Both women entered a Tejutsu stance, but the results of the Jutsu, two clones made of wood, made their jaws drop. Tsunade recovered first and said, don't be absurd, brat. That level of power and Mokuten is nothing compared to my grandfather. I'll bet you're just another experiment of Arachimaru's, scoffing dismissively. Tsunade Sama. The brunette said, admonishing the older woman. So, you won't even check. Naruto said in disappointment, and Bawako could see the warning signs of Naruto losing it. She decided to keep her mouth shut for the time being, but glared at Tsunade. Tsunade said, of course not. I can tell you believe what you said, but you're sorely mistaken. I never had children and never will. Besides, even if you are related to me, you're better off without me, whispering the last part. Naruto's hands were fists. He said, I understand, whispering too. Then, he left them to run off alone further in the forest. Iwako was utterly and absolutely furious. She looked Tsunade in the eye and hissed, if he gets seriously hurt because of you, you are dead, Sanin or not, and went after him. She knew that Tsunade and Shizun followed behind her, but paid them no heed. The three of them plus Pig reached a truly large clearing, only to see Naruto shatter several boulders and knock down trees with his bare hands on the other side of the clearing. Shizun let out a gasp, and Tsunade simply stood there. Buwako decided to wait to only intervene if Naruto was about to seriously hurt himself. She could see the chakra that covered his arms every time he punched clearly and could predict his moves a split second in advance. Damn it, damn it, damn it. Naruto shouted, tears and snot running down his face. He felled boulder after boulder after tree, but his raging emotions only became stronger, frustration, sadness, anger, the pain of rejection. He could tell the three females were there, and them seeing him cry only made him feel worse. Eventually, green-colored chakra was visible even to Naruto, and covered his entire body rather than his arms, without him being able to fully control it. This is, he said, letting his instincts guide him, Mokuten call of nature. His chakra spread through the clearing and nature responded to his call. He channeled all of his emotions into his chakra, including his regret at how much destruction he had caused, trying to mimic the size and species of the trees around him, and the result was incredible. The clearing, over a hundred meters in length and almost half as much in width was now packed with trees, and even beyond it, the forest was also more dense, from what Naruto could feel somehow, it was not his usual sensory. The destroyed trees had also been restored. Naruto could only admire his handiwork, almost disbelieving. I did all this. Unbelievable. This is what it means to awaken a bloodline. Buwako was right he thought. Then, he swayed in place, and the analytical part of his mind noted that he was going through serious chakra exhaustion before everything disappeared from his sight. Shizun was examining Naruto, all the while Buwako was worried to the point of chewing her nails, sparing a dirty look at an oblivious Tsunade every once in a while. He needs an infusion of chakra, or the consequences will be severe, the woman concluded. Then, what are you waiting for? Buwako said, fuming, barely controlling her temper. Unfortunately, I cannot do the chakra transfer technique well enough for such a delicate case. Only Tsunade Sama has mastered it to the required degree of all of us here, Shizun said, still looking at Naruto. In the meantime, Tsunade was staring at Naruto's bloody knuckles and palms, as if in a trance. Chapter 4. What's wrong with her? Buwako asked Shizun, almost ready to kill. She has hemophobia, Shizun explained. What? Isn't that? The greatest medic nin in the world has a fear of blood. Are you trying to make a joke? Buwako snapped at her in disbelief. Do not take that tone with me, Buwako san, Shizun said, scolding her in a motherly way, and yes, it's something that has to do with her past, something that would take too long to explain. Got it, Buwako said, expression set in stone. Then, she punched Tsunade in the ear and said, Oi, snap out of it. Both Tsunade and Shizun gasped, the latter likely in outrage. Buwako shouted, This is your only relative who's suffering here. Wake up and heal him, you wimp. Tsunade blinked repeatedly, as if waking up from her trance. Her gaze focused eventually, seeing Naruto's prone body held in Shizun's arms. She looked at his blood again, shaking a bit, but this time, she remained relatively calm. She said, Shizun, report, her voice not betraying any distress she felt. He got severe chakra exhaustion, Tsunade Sama, after awakening or partially awakening his bloodline, Shizun said. The wako was pacing in impatience and worry, and yet, she said nothing. Tsunade examined Naruto herself, possibly confirming what her apprentice had told her. Then, she started glowing yellow, making Naruto glow the same color, then green. So that was the chakra transfer technique. The wako could tell that Naruto was breathing more easily after that, and sighed in relief. She turned to Tsunade, who was studying her. The woman said, now, what to do with you? 
I have to somehow repay you for punching me in the ear and your earlier threats. The wacko's mouth moved on its own and said, I regret nothing. Smirking smugly, despite herself. When she realized what she said, she braced for a hit. Sunaid smirked too. She said, good answer, flicking Bawako's forehead with one finger, sending her tumbling. The wacko, though, landed on her feet, sideways on the trunk of a tree, sticking to it using her chakra. I kind of deserved that, she admitted in a bland tone which said she still didn't regret her earlier behavior. That's the spirit, Ichiha brat, Tsunade said, her lips twitching upwards, by the way, your Sharingan now has two Tomo in each eye. Congratulations. Huh? Oh, right, Bawako said, a bit absentmindedly. She took out the hand mirror she carried everywhere and reactivated her Sharingan, seeing two comma marks on each of her eyes. So, when will Naruto get up and what is his condition? She said, tension back to her body. The usual is six to seven days of unconsciousness for this level of chakra exhaustion, walking again at nine to eleven days, and over three weeks, to actively use one's chakra again without risk of permanent damage, Tsunade said, expression unreadable, there should be no permanent damage, as long as the boy does not overdo it. The wacko let out a sigh of relief. She said, that's a relief. Though, with Naruto's rate of healing, it shouldn't take more than a week until he's back to using ninjutsu safely. A healing factor? Tsunade said, looking more interested, care to share. His arm had broken in two places. According to the medic nin at the hospital, it should have taken three weeks or so to fully heal for a ninja without medical ninjutsu, but it took him less than 24 hours less than an hour, according to Naruto himself, Bawako said, not seeing a reason to keep that information from Naruto's relative, who was also the medic nin taking care of him. Interesting, Tsunade said, just like grandpa, whispering, seemingly forgetting that Bawako was even there in her study of Naruto. Naruto felt like he had been stepped on by the elephant boss summon, that was his first thought as he woke up, followed by where am I? Naruto-kun, a somewhat familiar feminine voice said, stay put, please. You went through quite the ordeal, and need your rest. Naruto moved his limbs around a bit. Satisfied that he wasn't in enemy hands, for lack of being bound, he let himself by lull to sleep. Naruto got up groggily. He felt as if pressure was being applied to all of his body, much like how training weights were supposed to be, only worse. Wait he thought, there's an idea. Is it possible to make a seal that weighs down all of the body? It should be great for training. Rise and shine. Tsunade exclaimed, interrupting Naruto's train of thought. Naruto sat up with some help from who he soon recognized as Tsunade's apprentice. His eyes met Tsunade's, and he flinched. The blonde woman cleared her throat and said, it appears we got off on the wrong foot, kid. Let's try this again. I'm Tsunade, of the legendary Sanin. Naruto signaled for water, which Shizun was quick to provide. After he drank a bit, he said, nice to meet you. I'm Yuzumaki Naruto, possibly send you Naruto. Please take care of me. Then, a yawn he couldn't hold back interrupted him. I have to say, Tsunade said, I'm impressed at how quickly you recovered. It's only been 20 hours or so, I would have expected you to be out for a week. Naruto stretched a bit and decided to try to get up. The brunette, who introduced herself as Shizun, advised against it. On the other hand, Tsunade said nothing, but was simply looking at him with keen eyes. He put a foot on the floor with difficulty, then the other. He was handed a walking stick, which he used as a literal crutch, to great effect, he only stumbled a little bit. Left foot, right foot, left again shit. The blonde boy nearly went tumbling, only for someone with a familiar scent to catch him. The wacko, the one who caught him, said, idiot, you are forcing me to pick up the slack. You're reckless as ever. Thanks, the wacko, Naruto said, relaxing without even meaning to. Anytime, the black-haired girl said calmly, her arms still around him. Naruto managed to get to a chair with Bawako's help and sat heavily, making the chair creak. After a few minutes of Naruto catching his breath, he said, so, how long was I out? Stretching again. 20 hours, didn't you hear Tsunade earlier? Bawako replied, a bit mockingly. Naruto was surprised by the fact that Bawako wasn't polite enough to use honorifics, even towards Tsunade. He knew that his friend almost never used them, but he thought her sense of self-preservation would keep her from pissing off someone so powerful. Not that he was one to talk. Hey, Naruto is something wrong? The wacko asked softly, worry in her tone. Naruto was snapped out of his daydreams. He said, I'm fine, just thinking. I hope you didn't burn out your brain, the wacko said teasingly. Very funny, Naruto shot back, but wasn't able to say something smart himself, he couldn't focus. A few minutes passed in silence, then Tsunade spoke up. She said, time for your exam, we'll see how well you are recovering, and if there is risk of permanent damage to your coils and the rest of your body. She touched Naruto's bare arm, hands glowing, and started Ming. Naruto started panicking, he said, wait, there's a chance of permanent damage. Why? Did you think that awakening a bloodline is an easy process? 
Sunade said, her voice stern, most of the Achiha clan couldn't use the Sharingan, but it wasn't necessarily for lack of the potential to awaken it. Some of them simply damaged the coils in their head enough when they awoke it that they couldn't use it anymore. I once faced a Yuki clan member in the Second Shinobi World War who couldn't expel Chakra out of his right arm, it's likely, though not certain, that the awakening of his Hyaten had been the reason. He was still a real bitch to fight, though, devolving into a rant about fucking one-handed hand seals and damn annoying pretty boys. Tsunade Sama. Language. Not in front of the children, at least. Shizun said, shaking the poor pig back and forth. Tsunade snorted, but didn't press the issue. Wait. What about my body? Is there permanent damage, Naruto shouted out, impatient. Don't shout in my ear, damn it. Tsunade said, almost equally as loud. Then, she said, there's no chance for permanent damage. Even if you were to train today and this is not permission to do that, my orders as a medic nin is that you wait until tomorrow evening at the very least, you would still be fine in the long term, though you'd still set back your recovery by doing something so stupid. In fact, your chakra and coils are recovering at an increasing rate, either now that you partially awakened your bloodline your regeneration is faster, or the chakra exhaustion slowed down your recovery. My money would be on a combination of both. Aren't you notoriously bad at gambling, though? Bawako said snarkily. Naruto used sign language to tell Bawako to stop poking the sleeping dragon, idiot, feeling much better already, but the girl ignored him. Oh, by the way, Tsunade said casually, when would you like to give your blood for a test? I've already determined that you're a real senju by scanning your chakra, but I'd much rather do a proper DNA test. Is it possible right now? I feel better already, Naruto said, getting up from the chair, stretching to get the kinks out of his limbs and back. I'd rather wait at least an hour, Shizun healed your cuts and broken knuckles immediately, so you didn't lose much blood, but your body is already stressed. Let me scan you again, though I'll judge how long you need for recovery, Tsunade said. She put her glowing hands on his arm again and said, your regeneration is still speeding up, I think that using medical ninjutsu of any kind, including diagnostic jutsu, on you improves it. Really? Naruto said, what would happen if I learned medical ninjutsu? A bit excited. Well, Tsunade said, that does explain how my grandpa healed himself without using hand seals. He simply had to use a diagnostic jutsu on himself without seals, and bam. Instant super regeneration. Smirking lightly. Wow. Hashirama-sama was incredible. Naruto said, still excited. Tsunade said, I suppose so, her expression strange. Naruto couldn't understand the mix of emotions, but he studied his relative's expression. His analysis was broken by Tsunade speaking. The woman said, you wouldn't happen to want to become Hokage, would you? Narrowing her eyes. No, Naruto said seriously, the only thing I care about right now is keeping my loved ones safe, though Aruka-sensei and Bawako are the only ones on that list right now. I also don't want to fall behind her in the ninja arts. He kept the fact that he used to crave acknowledgement and still did to himself. That was something only Bawako and probably Aruka-sensei knew. The same with his desire to leave Konoha behind, but Aruka-sensei probably didn't realize that. I see, Tsunade said in a neutral tone, keeping your loved one safe, huh? Keeping up with your friend in the ninja arts. Well, not a bad goal to have, either of those. Naruto remained silent, he could tell Tsunade wanted to say more. As if coming to a decision, Tsunade nodded to herself. She said, Naruto, how would you like to learn medical ninjutsu and the ninja arts in general, from me? We like master and apprentice. Naruto asked, stuttering a bit. Exactly that, Tsunade said, a hint of a smile on her face, so how about it? Want to be my second apprentice? Naruto stuttered over his reply even more, but he managed to say yes somehow. His eyes fell on Shizun, and the woman seemed elated, no hint of envy at all. He could tell that the brunette woman cared about her master a lot. Naruto said, you should smile more, Shizun said. It makes you look so much more cute and beautiful, not knowing why those words came out out loud. Well, aren't you a little charmer, Shizun said with a grin and a light blush and ruffled Naruto's hair, making him blush too for some reason. HMPH, Bawako said, congratulations, you womanize her, a teasing tone along with something else in her voice. Naruto turned to his best friend and said, thanks Bawako, but what's a womanizer? Bawako turned away, failing to hide a small smile, and said, never mind I'll tell you when you're older. We're almost the same age. Naruto said, slightly annoyed by Bawako's words. Bawako stuck out her tongue at him. As entertaining as this is, Tsunade said, shall we get on with the blood exam? Naruto blinked. Then, he paled, saying, okay, but will I have to be pierced with a needle? Tsunade rolled her eyes and said, aren't you a little too old to be afraid of needles? You're never too old to be afraid of needles. Naruto declared, smirking despite himself, heck, I know a woman over 40 who's afraid of seeing blood spilled. 
Naruto, Tsunade said, shut up and take it like a man. Glaring daggers at him. Naruto wisely shut up, he could see Tsunade's clenched fist and knew he was close to being pummeled by someone who was known as the physically strongest human alive. Your bedside manner needs some work, Buwako commented dryly. Tsunade didn't rise to the bait. She said, if you ever become the most skilled medic nin in the world, then you can criticize my bedside manner, calm once again. After a bit of resistance from Naruto, Tsunade took some blood from his left forearm and put it in a vial. She took some blood from herself too, put it in another vial, labeled them both, shook them around a bit and put them on the dresser. Then, she went through a sequence of hand seals and touched both the vials at the same time, frowning at something and biting her lip. Is something wrong? Naruto asked, slightly worried. Tsunade shook her head. She said, I'm surprised, that's all. It seems you are my grandnephew, but Nanawaki Dai was too young to have been a father at all. So, it must have been Zaruji who was your grandfather. Who was Zaruji, Tsunade Sama? Shizune asked softly. He was my older brother. We weren't very close, in fact, the only one of the family he was close to was Mito Basama, our grandmother. He had been a wild child and a womanizer, and he fraught a lot with grandpa and our parents since early on, though with grandpa, it might have been because of their similarities that they clashed, Tsunade said, a fond smile on her face, what I don't understand is why he would go and get a random girl pregnant, after he fell in love, he was very loyal to his lover, Namika's Rira oh, shit. Naruto looked at Tsunade, not realizing why she stopped and cursed, then, the reality set in. There was only one Namika's line in Konoha, as everyone knew. He said, wait, the Yandane was my father. What about my classmate, Namikaz Mido? There's another Namikaz in Konoha. Oh, it must have been the goddaughter my idiot teammate was talking about with so much pride I didn't pay much attention, Tsunade said, blushing a bit. What does she look like? She then said, serious again. Naruto thought it over a bit. He said, well, strawberry blonde hair, eyes that are dark blue with a hint of green the only others I know with that color are the Yandane and me and whisker marks like mine, only Marthiko, shit. Shit, shit, shit. Shouting in the end and clenching the nearest object in his fist, which happened to be a blunt kunai Bawako handed him. The kunai bent under the force of his emotions, making an ominous creaking sound. He whispered, I always blew her off when she tried to talk to me. Damn it. But if I didn't get the whisker marks from having a biju in my gut, where did we both get them? Tsunade cleared her throat. She said, I may be able to shed light on that. Wait, you know where my whisker marks came from? Naruto said, incredulous. Yes, Tsunade said, your mother, Yuzumaki Kashina, was the container of the Kaiubi after my grandmother, my father had whisker marks just like yours. So, what does that mean? Naruto asked, a bit confused, still unable to think clearly, not having fully recovered from his exhaustion. It means that if one is exposed to the Kaiubi's chakra in serious amounts before they're born, they get those whisker marks. The same happens if they're reborn by eating its flesh, thus absorbing some chakra from it permanently, like a pair of brothers from Kumo, Tsunade explained patiently. Oh, I got it now. Who were those guys from Kumo, though? Naruto asked. Their names were Kinkaku and Ginkaku, Tsunade said absently, but that's a story for another time. By the way, Naruto, Bawako said, her smirk worrying Naruto, did you really have to call your jutsu call of nature? It sounds like it does the same as the Inuzuka dog partner's dynamic marking. They had discovered the notes on various clans that the Ichiha had on other clans, Kanoha and outside. The notes on Kanoha's clans in the Jounin and Chuanin section of the library were surprisingly thorough and complete and had been updated very recently. Boy, Naruto said, carefully not pouting, it was instinctive. Do you mean that you instinctively called it that or that you pissed yourself without realizing? Bawako said, that damn smirk on her face. Come on, Bawako. Your naming sense isn't much better I mean, you named a Jutsu Lightning style. Thunderbolt what is it, a pocket monster's move. Naruto said teasingly. The wacko scowled and said, it's a perfectly viable name. Thunderbolt sounds badass. Too many manga will rot your brain, Naruto. Oh, come on, live a little. You have one hobby that isn't ninja training, and all it is is taking strolls around Konoha. Naruto said, getting a bit more serious. Oh, wait, did you just say badass? He then said, less serious again, blinking a bit in surprise. The wacko slapped her own forehead and said, only you could change from joking to serious to joking again so quickly, you idiot. Boy, I'm not an idiot, you jerk, Dadabeo. Naruto said, hating being called an idiot. You so are, you whisker face. The wacko said, losing seriousness fast. You look like a pretty boy, Naruto said, realizing his mistake as soon as he said it. What did you just say? The wacko hissed out, glaring at him horribly. In for a Ryo, in for a 50 note Naruto thought. 
Out loud, he said, I said you sound like that Sunday or love interest of the main protagonist from one of the manga I've read. The wacko's eyes opened comically wide, like she couldn't believe what she heard. Then, they narrowed, but a smirk started showing on her face. She said, if I'm the thundier love interest, then are you the main protagonist? Uh, what? Naruto said, shell-shocked. The wacko patted him on the head, a mocking smirk still on her face, and sat down in Siza, closing her eyes without dropping the smirk. Naruto could hear Tsunade snickers very clearly. He turned and glared at the woman, but she completely ignored him. Shizun looked just as shocked as Naruto felt earlier, then a smile bloomed on her face. She said, Naruto-kun, how many years have you two been married? Naruto groaned. He said, not you two, Shizun-san. We're nine years old is that something you say to a kid? Tsunade, in the meanwhile, was still snickering. She stopped for a moment, only to say, Shizun's got a point there. SNRK, wahahaha. Naruto was not amused and showed it by carefully not pouting. After Tsunade stopped snickering, she went to work again, saying, so, it's a brat. It's Bawako, Bawako said, dropping her previous smirk. Whatever, Tsunade said grumpily, have you had a checkup? Naruto was healthy, but I don't know about you. Bawako said, all academy students have gone through checkups, frowning lightly. Yes, Tsunade said, but have they been examined by me? Full of confidence or maybe arrogance. Bawako put up a bit more resistance, but in the end, she gave in and let Tsunade examine her. Tsunade put a glowing hand on Bawako's arm. After a few seconds of that, Tsunade lifted her head to look at Bawako, saying, what the hell, Bawako? Why are there traces of a possible S-rank Jinjutsu in your head? Naruto saw Bawako freeze, which was a rare sight. She said, wait it wasn't wiped fully. Shivering. Tsunade looked at Bawako strangely, then said, apart from that, you have minor nerve damage in the wrist area. Do you want those things healed? Bawako hadn't said yes faster in her life, Naruto thought. She sat very still, too. Tsunade did a few hand seals, put her glowing hands on Bawako's head, and after a few minutes, said, it is done. I recommend that you not use your Sharingan or any chakra around your head for a few days. Make sure you aren't put under any Jinjutsu for any reason for those days, too. I will put you under my personal surveillance if I have to. Thank you, Bawako said, and she seemed to be more at ease than ever, what about my wrist? Is healing nerve damage even possible? Impatient brat, Tsunade said, her smirk showing she wasn't angry. I'll get to that now. Healing nerve damage is not possible for medic nins other than me, of course. Strength of a hundred seal, release. Creation rebirth strength of a hundred, she then said, making a tiger seal. Tsunade started glowing slightly. Strange markings spread on her face, then the rest of her body, and she touched the wacko. For a few seconds, the same markings were on the young girl. Then, they disappeared, and Bawako twisted her hand around, an expression of wonder on her face. Naruto sensed for the chakra that Tsunade was using, and what he could tell was that it was all her own chakra because of the same yellow color, but in her forehead was a store of energy that was probably much greater in quantity than Tsunade could make on her own. What had she done? Had she stored her own chakra or something? The markings were no longer there, only the diamond-like seal dot the chakra in her forehead was no longer possible to sense, and Tsunade was breathing hard. Shizun helped the woman stay on her feet. Tsunade said, I really am out of practice. Though this is the first time I've used this jutsu, I don't think it was supposed to tire me out this much, I didn't even use a twentieth of the chakra stored in there, an expression of annoyance on her face. Wait you used an untested jutsu on me? Bawako said, one eyebrow twitching. Tsunade waved Bawako off, saying, I was certain of what it does, but I haven't had the opportunity to use it. The time I invented it was shortly before I left Kanoha.2. HMPH. Whatever, Bawako said, turning away. It made Naruto worry, too. He said to Tsunade, there won't be any problems with Bawako because of the jutsu, right? Extremely unlikely, but I will monitor her if it will put your minds at ease, Tsunade said. Wait, Shizun said, what about the academy? You two are students there, right? Or have you already graduated? Tsunade clicked her fingers, saying, I knew I was forgetting something. Does either of you have a guardian that you have to contact? It's not a good idea to go to the academy, as the Achiha brat Bawako has to rest for a few days, and Naruto needs his rest too. Naruto looked at Bawako, and she looked back. After a bit of non-verbal communication, Bawako said, I will ask a messenger hawk to take a message from each of us to Aruka-sensei. Maybe we will say that we are sick, or something like that. Naruto nodded, but then something occurred to him. He said, Tsunade-san. You said something earlier about my wood style partially activating. What did you mean? Tsunade didn't answer for a few seconds. Then, she said, call me Tsunade-sensei, or Tsunade-shishou-3, Naruto. 
as for the activation of your bloodline, it means that you didn't have enough chakra to activate the full wood style or, maybe not a strong enough body yet, so, while it started activating, it didn't finish the process. Thus, you got chakra exhaustion and didn't get the wood style at its full potential. So, it won't be anywhere as efficient chakra-wise as it's supposed to be, and some abilities may remain out of your reach. Not to mention the fact that your healing factor might become even greater when you awaken your wood style fully. Naruto digested that for a few moments. Then, he said, wait, that wasn't even Mokuten's full power shouting without meaning to. It wasn't trust me on that, Tsunade said, smirking, Grandpa could make his wood clone so quickly that only Madara was able to see him substitute himself with one, and made a training ground with a radius of a bit over 10 kilometers practically from scratch in only a few hours. 326 square kilometers do you know how large that is? How large was the space I covered with trees? Naruto asked, truly curious. Tsunade smirked and said, including the trees beyond the clearing, about 50 times less than one square kilometer, without them, 170 times or so less than a square kilometer. Don't be discouraged, though some people's chakra reserves grow exponentially, and your wood style will probably get a lot less chakra intensive when you fully activate it, too. According to my father, who was told by grandpa himself, grandpa didn't have his enormous reserves from the beginning, and now that you are going to be my apprentice, I will make sure that you improve in everything. Tsunade's smirk turned sadistic, making Naruto shiver. Still, he had more questions. He said, D do you think that I have a biju sealed in me, Tsunade sensei It's the theory Bawako and I have for why I'm hated in Konoha, a bit scared that his aunt would abandon him. Tsunade's hands glowed a bit again, and she put one on Naruto's arm, then slipped it under his shirt. She looked puzzled, but she said, I can't detect anything like that. Of course, it's possible, even likely, that your father sealed it in so tight that it will take years for you to use its chakra. After all, he did split it in half using the Shinigami, according to Jiraiya when he was drinking his sorrows. My advice is not to worry about it, except when you are improving your chakra control. I do have a few of the exercises that Grandmother and Kashina used to keep the Nine Tails from affecting their chakra control as much. Thank you, Tsunade Sensei. Naruto said, bowing in respect, happy that he had a relative teach him. He saw Aruka as a father figure or maybe an older brother, but it was different with Tsunade. Naruto was standing in a clearing with Tsunade, again, this time, Shizun and Bawako were standing further ahead, though they were still well within sensing distance. Now that you are rested, Tsunade said, a scary smile on her face, it is time to see what you can do, Naruto. Then, it's tour training for you. Tour training? Naruto asked, starting to have second thoughts about the whole thing. Is it too late to change my me? Shut up and show me what you can do. Now, what jutsu do you know? Tsunade barked out. Naruto showed Tsunade his seal less Kawarimi, substitution body replacement. Then, the transformation and the clone jutsu with only one hand seal each, the shadow clone, which had one seal to begin with, the water clone, which Naruto could use with only a tiger seal, the wood clone, which, after the activation of his bloodline, he could use with only two hand seals rather than three, water style. Wild water wave. Which he had gotten down with only three hand seals rather than four and wind style. Thrust, which still took three hand seals dog, rabbit and bird. Tsunade's eyes had narrowed, and that worried Naruto. She said, are you able to extract the water from a leaf? Naruto took a leaf in his hand and did just that, all the while, Tsunade was watching with keen eyes. It's as I feared. You have neglected some of the basics in favor of learning more things. Are you able to cut a leaf too? Tsunade said, her voice even. Naruto cut a leaf, then covered another in dirt. Tsunade examined them. Then, she said, it took too long for you to cut the leaf, same with the earth style and the water style exercise. There were also jagged edges in the cut, though they are more minor than I'd expect, but Shizun is the expert on wind style, not me, so we'll leave that for later. Now, start jogging around the clearing. For how long? Naruto asked. Just do it. I will tell you when to stop, Tsunade said, and Naruto started jogging. Naruto was getting tired after nearly an hour of jogging around the clearing, so he started slowing down. Ouch. Something, and Naruto thought it was a rock, had hit him in the ass cheek. Tsunade laughed quietly, but Naruto could hear her. She then said, don't slow down, Naruto. Oh, we need to train your situational awareness and dodging ability, too, so make sure not to get hit again, I won't throw the rock so weakly and slowly next time. That was weak and slow what the hell. Naruto didn't say anything, though, he only continued jogging. After he finished that training, with his bruises disappearing near instantly, Tsunade had him show her his tojutsu. She also had him demonstrate his strength technique, or, rather, his version of her technique. Tsunade said, I call it the Byakugo no Jutsu, strength of a hundred Jutsu. You seriously learned it in a week. 
I'll have you show me what chakra control exercises you know next. Naruto showed her how he stuck leaves on himself, then left them on when he climbed a tree, and later when he walked on water. He had to dodge a few rocks again, this time on the water, but his aunt said that his chakra control was adequate for his age. According to Tsunade, Naruto's tojutsu was a bit of a mess, learning from scrolls and an academy teacher who didn't know the styles very well will do that. She beckoned Naruto to follow her, and they went up to Bawako and Shizune. Tsunade said, Ichiha brat. Show me your tojutsu, without hesitation. It's Bawako, the girl said, but she showed Tsunade her stances without a protest, other than narrowed eyes. Interesting, Tsunade said, your tojutsu is certainly better than Naruto's. Can you use it well without the Sharingan, though? With that, Tsunade had Naruto and Shizune walk away from the two of them in order to spar with Bawako. Naruto looked on with worry. Don't worry, Naruto-kun, Shizune said, Tsunade saw Mado's know how to control her strength. Naruto nodded at her and turned back to Bawako and Tsunade. As expected, Bawako lost handily. Then, Tsunade told her to go all out, and Bawako activated her tojutsu and shouted, lightning style. Thunderbolt. That jutsu was mid-ranged and the longest range Raiden she had, mainly because the lightning element wasn't meant for true long range. Tsunade sidestepped, the jutsu apparently failing at its purpose. Naruto could sense the chakra of a shadow clone or Bawako herself under the ground, though Bawako obviously used the light of the flashing ninjutsu to cover for her making a clone. Tsunade lifted one leg and stomped the ground, dispelling the clone. Bawako herself had finished the hand seals of Phoenix Age Fire, and Tsunade swayed just enough for the small balls of fire to miss her, unfortunately for Tsunade, Bawako revealed that she had hidden shuriken inside those fireballs, shuriken that she controlled using near-invisible wires. That move was new, Bawako never used ninja wire in their spars, nor did she put shuriken in Hausenka no jutsu, Phoenix Age Fire Phoenix Flower jutsu. Tsunade kicked the ground again, while holding a one-handed hand seal, with a whisper of earth style. Mud hazard, which sent a splash of mud right into Bawako's active shuringen. She recoiled, the shuriken went to random directions, and Tsunade put a kunai at Bawako's throat before Naruto realized what had happened. Bawako admitted defeat, and Tsunade said, that was impressive. Impressive? Are you mocking me? Bawako said, obviously annoyed, eyes still bloodshot. Tsunade simply shook her head. She said, don't be absurd, Bawako, it was impressive for a genin, not even an academy student. You made a great opening move by using the Triton as a distraction and attack both. Using Hausenka no Jutsu wasn't even a mistake, per se. But you need a much greater speed of reaction and faster hand seals to accompany your Sharingan. Did you notice how with one Jutsu, I accomplished more than one thing? Rather like your use of Thunderbolt except the Jutsu I used is one of the most basic ones in the Earth element, it's barely D-ranked, well yours is probably at C-rank. The Wacko's focus on Tsunade's words was absolute. She said, so, I need to focus more on my reflexes and improving my hand seals. Tsunade simply nodded. Does that mean you will train both of us, Tsunade sensei? Naruto asked. Tsunade said, I'm willing to help her from time to time, but you will be my focus. Shizune spoke after many minutes of silence on her part. She said, I'll help both of you, too. My primary element is wind, but I'm a fair hand with ninja wire and weapons, especially Senban. Tonton let out a squeal, and Naruto smiled at Shizune, saying, that's great, Shizune-san. Tsunade said, my primary element is water, though my skill with earth style is better than most Iwa Jounin, as Bawako saw firsthand. I'm more than a fair hand at fire style, too. As for lightning style well, I can use it. That's all. What about Yang style and Yin style? Naruto asked. Tsunade did a double take. She said, so, that's how you learned the Byakugo no Jutsu in one week. You had already trained yourself in Yang style. Naruto shook his head. He said, it took me less than three days to complete the exercise of making a leaf heart as iron. I just get Yang style. In comparison, it took me over six months to make a leaf look transparent using Yin style, and only a small part of it, I still haven't finished that exercise. I don't doubt it will take me over a year to finish. Interesting, Tsunade said, her eyes lighting up. Then, she said, as for me, I'm the leading authority on Yang style, most medical ninjutsu, including the mystical palm, are based on Yang style. Though, between you and me, the mystical palm and the chakra transfer jutsu might not be ninjutsu, per se. If there's anything left over of the legendary ninshu, it's probably those two jutsu. Ninshu? Naruto asked, the word striking a chord deep within. Not important right now, Tsunade said, waving him off. A few days later, after Tsunade left a lot of books for Naruto and a few for Bawako and storage seals to study, the two children returned to Konoha. When one is summoned with the Jayaku Kuchiyas no Jutsu, reverse summoning Jutsu, they have two choices. 
they either return to their original position in time, or they have to return manually, or be summoned again. Buako was summoned by a hawk again, and then summoned Naruto. Naruto could see that the village was on high alert as he walked to the academy with Buako, though at a bit of a distance, so that people don't find out about their friendship. He eavesdropped on a few ninjas jumping on the nearby rooftops, and he heard something about an intruder coming into Konoha from above, passing through the barrier. Wait were they talking about the hawk? Naruto didn't know whether to be worried or just laugh. In the end, the ninjas of Konoha started settling down, though Naruto could tell they were still on edge. Naruka's keen eyes paused on Naruto for a few moments, then on Buwako. The lesson today was about the Second Shinobi World War, especially the Sanin and their achievements funny, considering Naruto had been with Tsunade less than two hours earlier. Naruka's assistant, Mizuki, was present today to learn the ropes or something like that. The assistant looked at Naruto, his eyes narrowing a bit, but he immediately hit it expertly. Weird Naruto thought, Mizuki-sensei never hit his dislike for me. If anything, he dislikes me more now than before Maifa. Naruka told Mizuki to pick a student and ask them a question on the material. Mizuki picked Naruto, saying, so, Naruto what was Tsunade of the legendary Sanin best known for? Barely holding in his laugh, Naruto said, she was known for her physical strength and healing prowess as a medic nin. She was the only one who could counter the poisons Chiyo of Tsuna made and could punch the ground hard enough to crack it. Tsunade had told Naruto about a few of her achievements, and Chiyo's name had come up more than once. Mizuki paused, then talked to Aruka in whispers. In the meanwhile, one of Naruto's classmates said, you made that up, Naruto. There's no way a woman can break the ground. The classmate's name was Nori, or something like that. He probably wouldn't even graduate. Especially if Sakura, Ino, Ami and even Hinata killed him today. Naruto could see the glares aimed at Nori and would stay very far away from him for at least a few days. Mizuki said, that is correct, Naruto, smiling in a fake way. Naruto shivered, despite himself. That smile was creepy. Fortunately, as Naruto and Buwako found out later, nobody found out that the intruder was a hawk, nor that Buwako had something to do with it. Buwako also set up a reverse summoning seal in the Ichiha district, so there would be no need for the hawks to infiltrate Konoha again. As for being summoned by Tsunade, she could do it through the slug contract, which Naruto signed, but that's a story for another time. Chapter 5. Interlude 2, CH45. I wanna know how much does it hurt Tebane. Ahaha, Makoto laughed delicately, so there is something you're afraid of, Kashina. Who knew? Come on, tell me, Kashina insisted, pouting. Well, if you insist. The truth is that it varies. Itachi's was a still painful but ultimately easy birth, it was over in less than 20 minutes. The Wacko's, on the other hand it took many hours, and I suffered serious chakra exhaustion afterwards, Makoto replied, shuddering at the thought of her daughter's birth. Itachi and Buwako had gone to sleep, and Fugaku took the opportunity to get frisky. He was kissing Makoto's neck when she stopped him, saying, wait, Fugaku. Mm? Was Fugaku's reply against her throat, making her shiver. She pushed him away, and Fugaku was giving her a look of mock betrayal, making her giggle. Makoto suddenly got serious again and considered how to word what she wanted to say. Fugaku, bless the man, let her think, though he raised an eyebrow. Makoto finally decided to just blurt it out and said, Fugaku, I don't want to have any more children. If anything, his eyebrow climbed higher he sighed and nodded, though, saying, I get it. Even if something like that is unlikely to ever happen again, the thought is always there. We should take precautions before we go any further. Yes, Mikoto admitted, Buwako is a one in several generations prodigy when it comes to chakra capacity, maybe even one in a million. Still, I don't want to take the risk. I love my daughter and I'm glad she exists, but I wouldn't be able to survive such an experience twice. Pekka is only 16, but he is an amazing sensor, though his range is still rather limited. I swore him to secrecy and brought him before Buwako the other day. Do you know what he discovered? Fugaku said, very serious. Makoto's own eyebrows climbed for all her skill as a kanoichi, she never could get only one eyebrow to move, other than his chakra capacity, that was the only thing she envied in her husband. Fugaku continued, saying, he could actually feel her chakra, and it was extremely potent, he advised that we teach Buwako how to lower the density of her chakra early on, if we want her to learn the Academy 3, or at least the Bunshin no Jutsu. Makoto's eyes opened wide, but she didn't let out a sound. That's not all. Despite her chakra being inactive, Fugaku said, her reserves, according to Tekka's estimation, are not completely subpar for an Uchiha entering the Academy. This time, Makoto couldn't hold in a gasp. Her daughter had academy-worthy reserves, but Buwako isn't even three years old. Mikoto said loudly. Bugaku nodded. Then, he said, we need to train her early, Mikoto. Mikoto's very soul rebelled against the idea. She said, you promised. 
You promised, Hugaku. A bit hysterically. Hugaku shook his head. He said, I am not going to take her to a war zone, Makoto. The gods know I am only making that mistake once. I wanted Itachi to know not to take people's lives lightly, I was such a fool, putting a hand on her back and rubbing it in circles. Still, Mikoto said, panic leaving her and her breath returning to normal gradually, training her early at least tell me you won't enter her in the academy early. Yugaku shook his head again. He said, I will enter her as normal when she is six and make it clear she is not to graduate before she is ten years old. Mikoto wanted to insist on her graduation age being 12, but considering the circumstances, she compromised Bawako would be allowed to graduate at 11. Considering Itachi had recently graduated at 7 after only one year in the academy, 11 was outside the norm for their family, Mikoto herself had graduated when she had been 9, same as Fugaku. She sighed and changed the subject. Mikoto said, so, how is the entire situation? Fugaku sighed as well. He said, not good, Mikoto. Danzo has outmaneuvered us completely. I never knew he was such a treasonous bastard. So the third believes him still. Mikoto said, getting angry despite herself. Yugaku replied in the affirmative. Mikoto swore loudly. Then, she said, not that the third is a paragon, himself, bitterly. Are you certain? Yugaku simply asked. Of course I'm certain. Mikoto yelled, snapping at her husband. Sorry, she said afterwards, but yes, I am certain that Yuzumaki Naruto is also Kashina's child. I don't doubt Namika's Mito is who she is supposed to be, and nobody said anything about Kashina having twins, but I have no doubt. Yugaku's expression changed into something impish. Makoto knew that expression, so she simply said, Yugaku, what did you do? Yugaku smiled slyly and said, I may have gotten Tekka to check on two more children. That was risky, Makoto chided him, he could have gotten caught, and then where would we be? Anyway, what did he find? She asked, impatience coloring her tone. Yugaku said, before that, please promise me you won't fly off the handle. Yugaku, Makoto said, her tone making Fugaku shiver. Makoto, Fugaku said, pointing towards his eyes. Makoto checked the nearest mirror, and in her reflection, she saw two active Sharingan, with three Tomo each. She took deep breaths and deactivated her eyes. That would never have happened when she had been an active duty ninja. She was getting rusty in her retirement. Fugaku fortunately did not mock her for her slip, regardless of how embarrassing it was for a Jounin ranked Tachiha, one who had once had better chakra control than most medic nins at that. Hell, she had survived going up against a third rakage with only mildly crippling injuries. The man said, according to Tekka, the two of them had similar chakra. But there is more there were trace amounts of Bijuu chakra in Mido, and few to no such traces in Naruto. Makoto couldn't believe her ears. She said, that's. Yugaku said, it's not a certain thing, of course, hurriedly, it could be a fluke, or it could be that both children were exposed to the Kaiubi's chakra, and Naruto simply absorbed it more efficiently. Makoto paced around the kitchen. She said, I thought Minato's seal was airtight. Is Tekka really that good of a sensor? Yes, Yugaku replied simply. Besides, he then said, only two years or so have passed, the chakra of Abijuu lingers long after such a sealing. You know few in Jutsu, the sealing arts, far better than I do, Makoto. Makoto did. Unbidden, a thought rose within her. She said, if we are going to teach Buwako from early on, I would like to teach her few Jutsu. Yugaku fell silent. Then, he said, the Yuzumaki arts, too. Yes, Mikoto said, her resolve solid, Kishina didn't teach me as much as she did Minato, but I am still more than a fair hand at Fuinjutsu, especially at the Ichiha style. She tried to distract herself, but she couldn't get Naruto out of her thoughts. Would the third Hokage really fall so low, and if so, why? Wasn't it enough that he had removed the smile from Fugaku's and her other clansmen's face? Did that man have to ruin everything? Fugaku was studying his daughter carefully. She had just said that she had finished the Katen. Kakaku no jutsu, fire style. Great, fireball jutsu. When her first attempt at it had been very much subpar, compared to Itachi, he had thought that it was too early. Why would she be ready? He had thought. Though she possessed more chakra than 12-year-old Itachi despite being 5 years younger, her chakra control could easily be too low. Not that there was a correlation between high reserves and low control, despite what some ninjas, usually first generation, believed, but Mikoto didn't want anyone to teach Buwako chakra control exercises yet, and Fugaku wanted to spare his daughter from chakra density exercises, they could cause chakra burns, which were extremely painful so he had agreed. Still, to claim that she learned the great fireball jutsu in four days. He had thought that she either didn't have enough control yet, or that she had little to no talent with the element of fire like her mother possibly both. The two of them walked to the small lake used specifically for fire jutsu practice. 
The wacko went through the hand seals for the great fireball, and what she breathed out was, simply put, magnificent. Bugaku was dumbstruck by what he saw. When Bawako looked to him for approval, Bugaku was walking away fast so that his thrilled expression wouldn't be seen. He finally said, as expected, you are my child, after all. Bawako's gasp let him know that his words had not gone to waste. After that, Mikoto started teaching Bawako Fuinjutsu, ninja theory and how to counter Jinjutsu, while Fugaku handled the physical conditioning and Tajutsu. The two of them split the chakra control, though it was Fugaku who handled the chakra density exercises, with help from Nanako, the recently deceased Shisui's grandmother, who had jumped at the chance for something to do, especially something related to the field of medicine like providing Bawako with specialized burn salves. As Bawako progressed, Itachi started objecting vehemently, but after Fugaku explained his reasoning, his son ended up stepping aside, eventually, he even showed Bawako a few tricks. As the rebellion ran closer to execution, Fugaku had less and less time to spare for his youngest, but he always checked on her progress. For some unknown reason, Bawako thought that she hadn't progressed much in Fuinjutsu, possibly because she compared herself to Namika's Mito, who, at the age of seven, was already a recognized sealing expert who sold various kinds of tags to shops all around Konoha. It was happening again at least, that was what Tsunade believed. According to her father, Hashirama and Madara had been best friends once, though her grandfather very seldom spoke of Madara. Her father had also severely disliked his uncle, Taburama, even more than he had Madara he had believed that neither Madara nor Taburama should have ever been Hokage and that they had both betrayed Hashirama. Once she had gotten the full story out of Rapu, her father, she hadn't exactly been pleased with Taburama, either. Taburama had used what had later come to be called a referendum as an excuse to keep Madara from becoming Hokage twice, the first time, he had pushed for making Hashirama Hokage, which the latter had been unsettled by but ultimately accepted. When the time for Hashirama to make a decision on who was to be second had been near, Taburama had, once again, resorted to a referendum that time, though, Raupu had strongly suspected that Taburama had rigged the process, it was one of the few points in which her father had fully agreed with Madara, and the point that had been the last straw for Madara. Convincing him that defection had been the only way. When Taburama had died, Hashirama had taken back the Hokage position, he had tested and taught Hiruzen Tsunade's future sensei and Taburama's chosen successor thoroughly, though obviously not thoroughly enough. It was around that time that Hashirama had been diagnosed with a terminal disease, but he had hung on until Hiruzen had turned 24. That was Tsunade's original motivation for becoming a medic nin who would surpass her grandfather. To cure people with the same ailment as Hashirama. When had she forgotten that? Back to her original thought. Naruto and Bawako. One could almost think that they were the second coming of Hashirama and Madara, but Tsunade knew. They most likely were. The Senju and Anichiha, the pinnacle of talent for their respective clans, being at roughly the same power and skill level and becoming friends them practically being the only ones in said clans was irrelevant. Tsunade could tell that it was no coincidence. That was the main reason why she had decided to teach Bawako too, Tsunade wanted to make sure that Naruto wouldn't have to go through what her grandfather had, so she had gotten to know the Ichiha brat, as she often called the girl. Thus, Tsunade made sure that Bawako was devoted to her friendship with Tsunade's great-nephew and new apprentice and wouldn't turn on him for power or out of insanity. Fortunately, Bawako didn't disappoint so far at least not completely, her obsession with killing her brother was understandable, though. Fortunately, from what Tsunade could tell, it was slowly giving way to a resolve to get answers from said brother. Recently, Bawako had gotten into the habit of lifting and channeling chakra through a particular war fan hidden in the Ichiha Shinobi library. She faintly remembered a tradition of every male Ichiha who had recently awoken the Sharingan doing the same, but what she did was not related to that. Simply put, the gunbai felt strangely familiar to her. One day, when she was putting her chakra into the gunbai, she found herself in a strange place which looked like the bank of a small river. Bawako quickly put herself on guard, but nothing could have prepared her for what she saw. A handsome boy in his mid-teens, with messy black hair and black eyes. He was very familiar. Bawako said, Shisui-san, not dropping her guard. The Shisui look-alike looked at her in bewilderment. He looked a bit younger than the last time she had seen him. He said, Bawako. Is that really you? You look so much older smiling cheerfully. The Wako activated her Sharingan, but nothing was out of place she couldn't see through whatever Jinjutsu this was. She said, what the hell is this? You died, didn't you? Shisui's shoulders slumped. He said, did I now? I only have memories up to the point I touched the gun by for the second time and practiced with it when I was 16, then darkness. I somehow know that I'm a kind of clone, not real. Did I die then and there? If not, how old was I when I died? 
the Wako was wary this could be an attempt to extract information from her through Jinjutsu, but she still answered, saying, you were 17 or 18, I'm not sure which. Before you ask, that man Itachi killed you. What? No, there's no way. Shisui said, his eyes wide open. The Wako told Shisui about what had happened leading up to the so-called Ichiha clan downfall and the slaughter itself. Shisui seemed angry after that, then contemplative, and said, the Wako, I wouldn't believe Itachi so easily, I seriously doubt that he was telling you anywhere near the whole truth. The Wako's shoulders slumped too, and she said, yeah, I kind of figured that out already. He's a phenomenal liar, and I can't tell what's the truth and what is not, though. Shisui said, I'm willing to help you out. I knew Itachi better than anyone else did, smiling again. Though I wouldn't have guessed he would use such a Jinjutsu on you, so my knowledge might be outdated, he then said, anger visible on his face again. The Wako thought it over a bit, then said, so, you are like a shadow clone of Shisui-san. I think so, Shisui said. Then, he twitched, saying, wait, how do you know about that Jutsu? The Wako crossed two fingers of each hand in the clone seal and produced two shadow clones. Shisui's black eyes turned Sharingan red and he examined the clones, saying, amazing. You can't be older than 9 or 10, and you have easily enough chakra for the shadow clone. It was obvious that there was something peculiar about that gunbai. She ignored Shisui's praise and said, do you remember why you touched that gunbai? Shisui fell silent for a bit, then said, well, I had just become decent at wind my third element when I got the brilliant idea to channel wind ninjutsu through the gunbai. I still don't get why Fugaku-sama scolded me and went to take it away. As soon as he took it from me well, I ended up here. The Wako ignored the fact that Shisui was able to call an idea of his brilliant without a hint of sarcasm and pondered the deepening mystery. If only there were someone who knew more, the Wako murmured. It happened suddenly a man appeared between the two of them. The Wako was immediately on guard again, same with both her clones, and she could see Shisui was wary, but he also looked much more relaxed than her clones did. The unknown man had chin-length brown hair, was not exactly tall, and his eyebrows were cut short. His eyes were a familiar black, which soon turned Sharingan red, with three tomo each. His facial expression could be best described as blank, or, at least, the Wako was unable to read it. Who are you? The Wako asked, not having ever seen this man before. Her clones were guarding her, but Shisui still looked suspiciously relaxed. The man started speaking in an archaic-sounding dialect, but soon enough, he managed to speak normally. He said, is it not polite to introduce oneself first? I am Ichiha Bawako, Bawako said, something seeming more and more familiar about this man. Well met, the man said, I am Indra, his expression barely changing. My name is Shisui, Indra-san. Are you an Ichiha? Shisui asked, seemingly dropping his guard completely, but Bawako could see from his subtle body language that he was very much ready to act. Indra turned towards Shisui, looking at him as if he were less than a cockroach, and said, I am no Ichiha. Indra might not have had much in the way of ninja training because he had apparently discounted Shisui as a threat because of his seeming naivety. The Wako noted that the Sharingan on its own wasn't enough, one had to interpret what the Sharingan told them. What did the man mean with his latest comment, though? How is that possible? The Wako asked in turn. Indra turned back to her and said, the Ichiha clan came about after my time. The Wako mulled that over, but Shisui intervened again. He said, no way. Are you the Ichiha clan ancestor? The Wako lifted an eyebrow, as if asking Shisui to explain. Shisui didn't disappoint. He said, legend has it that the first person to possess the Sharingan was the elder son of the Rakuto Senen and was the progenitor of the Ichiha clan. In turn, the younger son, also known as the Senju clan ancestor, was the progenitor of the Senju clan and the Uzumaki clan. Indra seemed angry at the mention of his family. He said, indeed, I am who you believe me to be. I am also one who was inspired by my father's ninshu and made my own version. What did you call it? The Wako asked, though deep down, she already knew. I named my skill ninjutsu, Indra said, obvious pride filling him. Both the Wako and Shisui not to mention her clones were speechless. They were in front of the creator of ninjutsu. Then Indra filled them in on the nature of the fan. He said, this instrument of war that you touch takes chakra from its users and turns it into a copy of said user, once he or she dies. The copy has memories and skills up to the point of contact with the weapon. If the next user has chakra which is compatible with this gun by, he or she is able to meet the copies previously stored. A lot of chakra is necessary both for a copy to be created and for one to enter the gun by's world. Is this fan truly that ancient? The Wako asked, beating Shisui to the punch for his own question. That is a story for another time, Indra said, but the Wako could see approval in his face, was her question that smart. Indra hated a slew of things, but Ashura and his transmigrants were at the top of that list. 
this Buwako, his own newest transmigrant, was otherwise flawless in his eyes, her relationship with that boy, Naruto, was a serious black mark against her, though. He intended to plot a way to persuade her to distrust Naruto, Indra was certain that an opportunity would present itself eventually. For the time being, Indra would ingratiate himself with her. Curiously, a pattern had established itself in the transmigrants of himself and Ashura. Each successive transmigrant was significantly more powerful than the previous one, approaching the original strength of the two brothers, culminating in Madara surpassing Indra once he had assimilated Senju Hashirama's genetic material. In the same vein, Hashirama at his best had been more powerful and skilled than that fool Ashura, though he could not compete with Ashura, with the six paths Yang power included. Indra would strive not to even think of that abominable six paths age mode, the power that had killed him. According to their father, Hagoromo, it could get even more powerful if the chakra of the tailed beasts were added. Indra had thought of the six paths age mode, after all. Oh well. The pattern seemed to confirm itself in Bawako, she had been born with exceptional reserves of chakra, had reflexes that even Indra had not possessed the like of at her age, moved faster than any other person her age Indra had encountered, her physical strength was well above par for a female. And she had reached two tomo in each Sharingan at an age most possessors of his chakra only managed one each. The Ashura transmigrant, though, seemed to be different. His reserves of chakra were barely adequate, though his bloodline limit might compensate for that. Nothing else was subpar where it concerned Senju Naruto, except his amount of chakra, though. Could it be Ashura's late bloomer tendency? Most likely. That might mean that Senju Naruto would reach near impossible levels of chakra once he reached a certain age and skill level, the attributes most affected early on tended to grow the most in the end. Badara's copy wished to speak to Bawako, but Indra kept blocking him, the man was too enthusiastic to allow any interactions with his newest transmigrant, fortunately, this was Madara from long before he had managed to steal Hashirama's genetic material, thus not powerful enough to overcome Indra. This Shisui, though what threat could he pose to Indra's plans? What if Naruto learn 100 Jutsu before tuning exam Sasuke Fem? And thanks for watching my video till the end if you enjoy this content, then do consider subscribing to my channel, and leave a like if you guys need the next part, comment down, and thanks for watching the video and see you guys in the next video.